Good morning, everyone. I am honored to be here today as the coordinator of the seminar, welcoming you all to the one day national seminar on Leaving Morally Philosophical Explorations in Buddhist Ethics. The seminar is organized by the Department of Philosophy, Ashutosh College, in collaboration with the Department of Philosophy, University of Calcutta, and in association with IQAC, Ashutosh College. The seminar is all about how we can live more fulfilling lives in the world fraught with problems and challenges, which in turn give rise to anger, frustration, envy, jealousy, and other mental distractions. We often look outwards for solutions, invent ways to change the world. We look outside for our happiness when it is really within our minds. To be happy, we only need to get rid of the defilements of mind. Buddhist philosophy shows us the way to train the mind for fulfilling and a well-ordered life. Ethics is a part of life. It is about how we live our lives. If we do not live our lives in a good way, a way that is not harmful to ourselves and also not harmful to others, nothing can survive. Ethics is the ground, the very basis of all our practices. The Buddha himself says, morality is the basis of all practices. In Buddhist ethics, moral discipline by observing the five moral precepts called Panchasila, that is to abstain from taking any life, to abstain from taking what is not given, to abstain from the misuse of the senses, to abstain from taking what is not given, to abstain from the misuse of the senses, to abstain from the wrong speech and to abstain from the intoxicants that cloud the mind is indispensable to the practice of Buddhism by a monk or a lay person. However, these moral precepts run against our deep-rooted habits and tendencies. Since time immemorial, we have been building up habits conditioned by all we have been subjected to through our upbringing, through the environment we are surrounded by, through the people we are associated with. A lot of what we experience in our daily lives result in harboring toxic emotions like hatred, anger, greed, jealousy, anxiety, fear, etc. Practicing Buddhist precepts is to take care of these emotions by abstaining from doing things that cause sufferings. Morality in Buddhism is rooted in the universal law of causation or the relation of cause and effect. It states that every action we perform has a bonding with its effect. A planted seed which gets nourished, grows up eventually and bear the fruits. We may explain the Buddhist moral discipline in the same light. Virtue or goodness within us, if nurtured, produce beneficial results and contribute to our well-being. This is the law of moral causation called karma. Karma is created by our, by our body, speech, and mind. The thoughts within us lead to our speech and action. Some of our thoughts do not manifest themselves through our behavior, but they lay down seeds in our consciousness in a way that they remain dormant until the right conditions make way for their manifestation. What manifests as our outward behavior is the crudest of our thoughts. Our thoughts of hatred towards someone eventually produce speech and action 
that harm the other person. The reason to follow the Buddhist moral precepts is to address and to eliminate the defilements of the mind. The foundation of Buddhist practice consists in threefold training, namely sila, that is morality, samadhi, that is concentration, and pragya, that is wisdom. Each factor in the threefold training is necessary for the other. However, the process starts with developing moral discipline. The four noble truths grow in us awareness of suffering as the nature of existence, its cause, and how to live without it. Our eminent speakers will enlighten us about the different aspects of Buddhist ethics. Uh, through the academic sessions that follow. But before we begin our academic session, we would like to welcome uh, our principal, Dr. Manush Kobe, principal of Ashutosh College in the program. Good morning. Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, I'm audible. Good morning, everyone. 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 Hello. At first, at first, congratulations to the philosophy department of Ashutosh College for organizing such a beautiful seminar. Professor Dr. Horishankar Prashad, formerly head. Department of Philosophy and Dean, Faculty of Arts, University of Delhi, is present among us. Thanks to Professor Dr. Prashad for giving his valuable time. Professor Dr. Pralayankar Bhattacharya, Head of the Philosophy Department, University of Calcutta, is present among us thanks to Professor Prolankar Bhattacharya for giving his valuable time. Professor Dr. Amit Bhattacharya, Department of Comparative Indian Language and Literature, University of Calcutta, is present among us thanks to Professor Amit Bhattacharya for giving is valuable time. Professor Dr. Modhumita Chattopadhyay, Department of Philosophy, Jadapur University, is present among us. Thanks to Professor Modhumita Chattopadhyay for giving his valuable time. And more reputed professor and are present in today's seminar through online and offline. Also present are researchers and dear students. On behalf of the Ashutosh College family, I welcome everyone present 
through online and offline thanks to all those who helped in organizing this seminar including sri somnath das it associate of our college i hope our seminar will be successful finally once again congratulation and best wishes to everyone thank you रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर श्रावणी रॉय आईक्यूएसी आशुतोष कॉलेज टू डेलीवर हर वेलकम एड्रेस good morning everyone and uh, a very warm welcome to all our celebrated guests our honored speakers of the day and to all students and all participants from other colleges uh, today's uh, seminar this is the first national seminar being organized by the department of philosophy ashutosh college and for this i congratulate them on behalf of the entire iqac thank you for organizing this uh, national seminar to commemorate world philosophy day which we know is observed on the third thursday of november every year this was uh, this uh, world philosophy day was initiated in to observing this day was initiated in 2002 if i remember correctly and this year it was celebrated on the 16th of november so to commemorate that day the department of philosophy ashutosh college in association with the department of philosophy university of calcutta has organized this national level seminar uh, it is on buddhist ethics uh, it is of course something that i barely know anything about actually i know nothing so i hope like uh, the many participants i too might be enlightened for a while before i am forced to leave uh, the auditorium but nevertheless uh, uh the theme for this year's world philosophy day uh, was uh, reflect philosophical reflections in a multicultural world something like that and uh, in a society uh, in a world when ethical values ethical standards uh, moral principles of human behavior all these are on the verge of collapse where standards are changing daily with changing social and economic situations i think it is time that we looked back to the buddha himself and what he has to say for all of us the message that we do not need to tuck away into uh, the folds of history but to actually inspire us to uh, come to terms with a rapidly changing world so it is a very timely uh, organization this seminar and uh, dr hari prasad uh, hari shankar prasad sorry sir uh, formerly head of the department dean and uh, dean of the faculty of arts department of philosophy university of delhi he has uh, taken a uh, time out of his very busy schedule and thank you sir for making the journey from delhi to kolkata to address this gathering today our thanks also on behalf of the iqac and ashutosh college Uh, to 
ডক্টর প্রলয়ঙ্কর ভট্টাচার্য ডক্টর অমিত ভট্টাচার্য ডক্টর মধুমিতা চট্টোপাধ্যায় অ্যান্ড ডক্টর কুন্তলা ভট্টাচার্য আই হোপ আই হ্যাভ নট মিস আউট এ নিউ ওয়ান থ্যাংক ইউ এভরি ওয়ান ফর বিং উইথ আস টুডে and uh, we will all be enriched by what you have to say to us uh, and address this gathering today once again uh, let me uh, warmly welcome you on behalf of the iqac of ashutosh college to today's national seminar and before i uh, leave uh, the stage i would like to thank my colleagues in the department of philosophy for organizing this seminar thank you for Uh, organizing this and thank you for thinking of this topic uh, buddhist ethics for uh, the uh, for the seminar and thanks also to all members of the it staff of our college and to the staff of the centenary building for because this is the first time that we are going online this is a hybrid mode uh, seminar so we are going online it is being streamed live on youtube and on gmeet and we have our audience here also in person the speakers will be delivering their talks in person from the stage but there are listeners and for the first time we also have our partner colleges who are collaborating colleges under the memoranda of understanding that we have with many institutions across the state and even beyond and also members or the spoke colleges who are with us we are a hub college one of the two hub centers in the state and we have many spoke colleges also participants from both mo and spoke colleges who are here with us today uh, through google meet and through youtube i will not delay proceedings further because i think we are running behind schedule thank you once again and i know that today's seminar will be a wonderful experience for everyone and it will be a great success thank you hello thank you uh, dr shrabuni roy uh, for your address uh, i request now uh, dr shrabuni roy is here with us i request dr prolankar bhattacharya uh, of uh, head Univer head of the department of philosophy university of calcutta i also request uh, dr amit bhatt uh, dr shashwati de mondol head of the department of philosophy ashutosh college and dr amit bhattacharya uh, he is professor of comparative literature and language of university of calcutta i request all of you to please be on the stage we will felicitate you
Professor Dolly Shaw, our colleague and assistant professor in the Department of Philosophy, Ashutosh College, will now felicitate uh, our speakers here and guests. I request Dolly to felicitate our guests. I, hello, I now request Dr. Pralankar Bhattacharya, uh, Professor and Head of the Department of Philosophy, University of Calcutta, to speak a few words in the seminar. Hmm? Namaskar. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay. Yes. Namaskar. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, I must say that I am not uh, eligible to stand here to speak on this topic uh, because I know very little about, about this Buddhist philosophy or Buddhist ethics. So I am not in this area, but since uh, incidentally or accidentally at present, I bear the property of being head. So I have to say something. Uh, first of all, I, on behalf of uh, the Department of Philosophy, University of Calcutta, uh, welcome all the distinguished speakers present here, uh, my esteemed colleagues, uh, guests, and all the students. <clears throat> I'm really thankful to the Department of Philosophy Ashutosh College and obviously to the principal Ashutosh College for organizing this uh, kind of uh, seminar in collaboration with the Department of Philosophy, University of Calcutta. And when they sent the proposal to me, I readily agreed to that proposal because of two reasons, mainly of two reasons. The first is that I do believe that any collaborative endeavor uh, for learning and dissemination of knowledge can uh, actually create a kind of academic culture that can elevate us through the sharing of information and resources, mutual trust and respect responsibility and creativity, and thereby a meaningful communication develops, especially with our dear students. And secondly, I thought that this topic, that is Buddhist ethics, is one of the most relevant topics at present, where actually we live in a society which is always threatened by the culture of fear, by the culture of greed, by the culture of envy, jealousy, and all these things. 
So we are lacking day by day love, empathy, and compassion. And we are lacking also the rational element that can play an important role to build up human relationships. And uh, at the same time, I therefore believe that this topic is the very relevant and interesting and significant topic, not only in philosophy, but that should be cultivated in the society as a whole. However, uh, it is true that once I remember Reese Davids say that uh, the, the, the basic difference between the Buddha and the other teachers chiefly lies in his broad outline of philanthropy. And uh, it is true that according to the Buddha, that the truth actually lies in our uh, lead life, in our living the life, how we live the life. And so from this standpoint, I find it is quite interesting because as a student of ethics, personally, I have an interest in as a whole in ethics, in Western ethics. But considering all these things, I have certain uh, interests, uh, inclinations, and also queries uh, regarding Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist ethics. Only a few words, few lines, I would say. I won't take much time. Uh, that is, uh, it is true that, as I have said, that Buddhist uh, philosophy, Buddhist ethics, primarily, I think, is mainly grounded in, in our lead life. So it is a kind of pragmatic ethics, I do believe, because I find that human suffering is a main concern. So sometimes I find certain similarities between Buddhist ethics and the ethics developed by some existential thinkers, the ethics developed by the care ethics recently, which has come into uh, the main area of uh, the philosophical practice. So therefore, I think that uh, it, it has a lot of importance. But at the same time, because many scholars have argued, have stated categorically that the uh, Buddhist ethics is mainly grounded in the ultimate the notion of ultimate good, that is nirvana, we know, the cessation of suffering. And that has to be interpreted, perhaps, in terms of the Eightfold uh, Noble Truths, in, uh, which is uh, taught in Buddhist philosophy. But at the same time, I have certain queries and questions and perhaps some reflections which follow from the study of Buddhist ethics. And a few of them I can, I can, I can mention here. I hope that this will be addressed, this will be discussed, this will be elaborated throughout the day when the eminent speakers will dwell on these areas or topics or issues. First of all, I sometimes I think that uh, uh, how, how does Buddhist ethics uh, actually address the relation between facts and values that we normally discuss in the field of ethics? Because sometimes many scholars have emphasized this, that Buddha has had emphasized the relevance of the relative objectivity of moral judgment, and he seems to choose the middle path between the facts and uh, values. Secondly, sometimes this question also crops up in my mind that uh, what is the impact of Buddha's disbelief in an enduring self on his ethics? Because uh, does it does it uh, imply that uh, this is a kind of uh, transformation from our egoism to altruism. And at the same time, I also think sometimes that this implies also certain things uh, uh, like when I cease to have this kind of uh, belief in some enduring self, then does it mean that I'm actually uh, existing in, in the pure, some kind of pure uh, presence? or present. And if that is true, then what is about our uh, moral responsibility? Thirdly, sometimes I, I think that this issue has some relation between the distinction uh, that is made in Buddhist philosophy between uh, conventional truth and ultimate truth. Uh, Samriti Satya and uh, Paramatma Satya, these kinds, these are also related to these issues because uh, the Buddhist reductionists, I find sometimes that they talk about this kind of thing that a person is nothing but an occurrence of the chain, causal, causal series of psychophysical elements. 
then uh, another another problem or another question also uh, or issue regarding buddhist ethics also comes in the mind in my mind when i study normally western ethics that is uh, in in the mahajana tradition in in uh, avidhamma teachings it is found that uh, the the liberated i mean the enlightened person as buddha has said that the enlightened person will strive will make an attempt to help people overcome uh, suffering now my my query uh, first is that uh, from where uh, does uh, this uh, or from where does this uh, attempt uh, for altruism actually derive its force is it is it uh, is it mere compassion because recently when i study western ethics i find that compassion empathy they have been emphasized to a great extent and it is said that compassion has a very two important elements two important moments the 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 moment of attentiveness and the moment of will and i have also found that sometimes uh, uh, this the whole thing is presented like compassionate wisdom that is karuna and pragya so uh this issue i think it will be touched upon it will be discussed in this discussion because uh, the many issues arise in this context whenever we try to uh, make a comparison between indian ethics buddhist ethics and western ethics uh like for example i can say that the concept of compassion also calls into question not only the uh, the, the not only the concept of or the relevance of impartiality but also the desirability of impartiality on the other hand compassion also attaches a new dimension to the uh, thought of our ethical understanding because according to compassion as it is studied now it says that actually we, we are actually changed by our relationships a person can be changed by by the relationship that he has with others so relationship becomes very important as far as compassion is concerned this this is also uh, uh, another aspect i think of buddhist ethics that is uh, the i mean many many scholars also say about this that buddhist ethics has a kind of consequential teleological axis so this also brings us to the uh, relationship between buddhist psychology and buddhist ethics what could be the relation between buddhist ethics on the one hand and on the other an utilitarian approach and kantian approach because sometimes it is found or we can we think of an alternative ethics derived from buddhist ethics which can go beyond the consequentialist approach and deontological approach because it is said that our obligation i mean uh, our ethical approach is not only to be determined only by obligation and rationality but a kind of moral uh emotion like compassion and empathy so i think in the whole world uh, many scholars are insisting on this issues recently many works have been done uh, perhaps by coven and garfield uh, like the relation between buddhist ethics and human rights buddhist ethics and democracy especially when you are talking about the concept of justice all over the world so considering all these issues i think buddhist ethics is one of the most relevant Uh, perhaps uh, ethical approaches practiced in this whole world so with this few words i again welcome all my esteemed all our esteemed uh, speakers resource persons who are present here and professor uh, hari shankar prasad professor madhubita chattopadhyay professor amit bhattacharya uh, professor kuntala bhattacharya who is not present for us here who have generously agreed to share their knowledge and expertise with all of us so i think it is going to be a good time for us let us make the best use of this opportunity to uh, to learn to grow together and i hope that this is going to be an uplifting day for all of us so and of course last of all my uh, love to our students because without whom we the teachers don't exist so thank you everybody who are present here thanks to everybody namaskar no, thank you very much
Thank you, sir, for your address. I now request Dr. Shashwati De Mondol, head of the Department of Philosophy, to uh, for a few words on the thrust area of the seminar. Hello, good morning everyone. As the departmental head, I extend a very hearty welcome to all of you who are present in this seminar hall, as well as those attending in the online mode. In this national seminar on Buddhist ethics, the title being Living Morally, Philosophical Explorations in Buddhist Ethics, organized by the Department of Philosophy, Ashutosh College, in association with IQAC of our college, and also with the academic advice received from the Department of Philosophy, University of Calcutta. This seminar has been organized to commemorate the World Philosophy Day. This is a seminar on morality. Uh, we have chosen this area because it seems that nothing in human experience is without moral meaning. Ethical concern encompasses the multiple aspects of practical, prudential, and what most moderns call moral choices under the general query of how one ought to live. As Plato puts it in the mouth of Socrates in the Republic, the argument concerns no casual topic, but how one must live. We are all well aware that nowadays ethics is not merely concerned with formulation of certain theories, but is extended to other aspects of human life, environment, health, business, management, etc. We cannot avoid involvement in ethics for what we do and what we do not do is always a possible subject of moral evaluation. The concept of morality takes on a different dimension when looked at from the perspective of Indian philosophy. In the Rig Veda, we first come across the idea of Rito, a universal moral order guiding the entire world. <clears throat> it stands for the basic virtue of life. As philosophy gradually developed through different stages in India, the idea of morality termed dharma also underwent changes. For each system, dharma is the primary stage for the preparation towards the attainment of liberation. Thus, there is a fundamental difference between the oriental conception and the occidental conception of morality. In the East, unlike in the West, morality is goal-oriented. What is that goal? The goal is the liberation, complete cessation of suffering. Now to enter directly into this theme, Buddhist ethics, let me focus on its present day relevance. Buddhist ethics may be appraised primarily as a religious ethics, being based on the basic set of religious ideas preached by Lord Buddha. His aim was to show ordinary people the way of liberation from the world of suffering. He himself had discovered the path by his own effort, and his mission was to show the way to others. His purpose was a practical one, to act as a guide, to point the way by which men could save themselves. Thus, Buddha stands before the world as a pioneer, a pathfinder who rediscovered the way that leads from sorrow to sorrowlessness. Man has to try himself. Buddha will be the guide. Abandon the base conduct of common men and adopt the methods shown by Buddha. That is the cardinal maximum of Buddhist morality. 
giving up various forms of worship such as sacrifice, ceremonial rites, as accepted in the Brahmanical religion, Buddhism emphasized the need for self-culture to gain liberation. Uh, in the Samutta Nikaya, Buddha had said, I lay no wood, Brahmana, for fire on altars. Only within burneth fire I kindle. With this fire incessantly burning and with the self ever restrained, I live the noble and higher life. These words point out that at, the, at that period, the Brahmanical religion deteriorated. By opening the door of his Sangha, to all stratas of people, he did not pay any attention to distinctions between uh, b uh, distinctions based on socioeconomic status. This idea brought about a social revolution and was the root of popularity of Buddhism. Now, to enter a little deeper into the philosophical explorations of Buddhist ethics, an important task would be to bring out one or two positive aspects of this position. There are so many aspects. But I can just point out one or two here because of a shortage of time. First, pragmatic as he was, the Buddha was acqu acqu acquainted with the variety and variability of human nature. In uh, uh, He divided human beings into four categories. Those who are committed to one's own well-being and not to others. Those who are committed to others' well-being and not to one's own. Those who are committed to neither and those who are committed to both. Of these, men belonging to the last type are the most admirable and said to prosper both in this life and in afterlife. Now, this assertion of variety of human nature is something ignored in many Western model thinkers. Hobbes, for example, showed a tendency of generalization over human nature. Either men are all nasty and brutish, motivated by self-interest alone, or all of them are said to be benevolent. Besides, these philosophers mainly dealt with what attributes men possess and not what they might acquire. It has almost been taken for granted that what is best for me is unlikely what is best for everyone. Therefore, there is not only a theoretical but also a practical incompatibility between individualistic and universalistic concern. It is considered rational to maximize one's own good, whereas self-sacrifice has been considered moral, thus making a resolution of this conflict between rationality and morality very difficult in many Western, in many, uh, Western uh, theories of Western thinkers. But this problem resolves fairly easily in Buddhist ethics. The Buddha, on the other hand, recognized that it is possible to reverse one's innate dispositions by leading a good life, to promote one's own good and the good of others. By performing good actions repeatedly, we strike at the root of wrong actions. Hence, in this frame of thought, self-interest and benevolence need not exclude each other. Binay Pitaka uh, lays down the code of conduct for both lay Buddhists and monks, the practice of five precepts or Panchasila, as a means for attaining highest possible good that an individual can ever attain. These are abstention from Hingsa, Odatto uh, Dana, or Brahmacharya, Mrishavada, uh, and Surapada. Each precept enjoins a particular form of self control and promotes a particular noble virtue. The first tails to control anger, the second the craving for material possession, the third the lust for flesh, the fourth cowardice and benevolence, and uh, the fifth for unwholesome excitement. The practice of Panchasila promotes compassion, generosity, non-attachment, contentment, truthfulness, and clarity of thought respectively. Though Panchasila primarily denotes the individual code of conduct, the concept has been interpreted to include five international code of conduct among nations adopted in the Afro-Asian summit of 1955. At the level of nations, the precepts have been taken to signify non-aggression, mutual respect for each other's territorial integrity, non-interference in others' internal affairs, equality, and mutual benefit and peaceful coexistence. 
I keep aside the details of Brahma Bihara Bhavana or the modes of sublime conduct comprising the virtues of loving kindness, moitri, compassion, karuna, joy arising out of appreciation, mudita, and equanimity, upeksha. I refrain from entering into the details of this, but I would like to end my discussion with what is stated in the Visuddha Visuddhi Magga regarding Moitri. Its proximate cause is linking others with oneself and its results are suppression of ill will and hatred. And obviously it stands for benevolence. Sabbe satta sukhita hantu. May all beings be happy. A person who practices Maitri sleeps happily, awakes with a loving heart, receives love of all beings, becomes free from the toxic effects in this physical system and gets a beautiful facial expression and dies peacefully. What else can he want? We have lot many questions. Professor mm -hmm. Prolankar Bhattacharya has mentioned lots of questions. Uh, so I'm not repeating my questions anymore because many of his questions are also our questions. So I hope uh, that uh, in this... Uh, uh, th uh, this seminar will offer us many answers to the questions that we have and enlighten us academically, intellectually, and in uh, many other ways uh, for the whole day. I, 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 I expect a success of this seminar. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Shashuti De Mondol, for your speech. We now uh, have uh, we now have our keynote address for the seminar. We are honored to have among us Dr. Amit Bhattacharya, who will deliver the keynote address for our national seminar. Professor Amit Bhattacharya is, was the head of the Department of Comparative Indian Language and Literature, University of Calcutta. He studied in the special discipline of Naya Vaisheshika in the Department of Sanskrit of the University of Calcutta. He was honored with a number of awards, including two gold medals and one silver medal from the University of Calcutta. His primary interest, however, rotates round the Katha discipline of Indian philosophy. Many of his research papers on diverse subjects have been published in national and international journals. He has taught a number of uh, he has taught in the num at a number of premier institutions of West Bengal including Norashingo Dattu College, R.K. Mission Vidya Mundir, the, the PG section, both philosophy and Sanskrit, Sanskrit College uh, and University, Badawan University, Rabindra Bharati University, a lifetime member of the Asiatic Society, Bautho Dharmankur Shabha and Shangashkrita Shahitya Porishad, Calcutta. His publications are as follows Prachin Bharate Shamushkar Chacha, Bharatiya Darshane Ruporekha, Nay Boshishi Ker Bhasha, Charbak Darshan, Bodhu Darshan, Joino Darshan, Vara Manjusha, Shankho Darshan, Robindra Darshanite, Bharatiya Darshan, etc. We now uh, request Professor Amit Bhattacharya to deliver his
his keynote address for the seminar. Over to you, sir. प्रियं परार्धां विदधत विधात्रिजित तमो निरस्यन अभिभूत भानुहृत नुदन निदाघं जितचारु चंद्रमा सबंदते अर्हन यह यस्य नोपमा एक्चुअली दिस बेनेडिक्शन was uttered by Asya Ghasya in Buddha Charita. The very first Mangala Charana Sloka, Lord Buddha, who was unparalleled, who defeated even God, who vanquished the Shan and how all activities are done by him categorically mentioned by the commentators. So I would not like to elaborate. At the outset of my speech, first my dear principal, who is uh, not in this hall, but online, Dr. Manas Kovi, and uh, our HOD of Philosophy University of Calcutta, Dr. Pralayankar Bhattacharji, coordinator of the seminar, Dr. Chundrima Bhad, IQAC coordinator, just now, who left the room, Dr. Shravani Rai, HOD Philosophy of Asutus College, Dr. Saswati De Mandal and uh, in front of the audience, both the learned scholars and colleagues of mine, Professor H. S. Prasad and uh, Professor Mudhumita Chattopadhyay, all faculty members, and above all my beloved students who are sitting in front of me. I am happy to know that a day-long seminar is organized by the Department of Philosophy in collaboration with the Department of Philosophy, University of Calcutta, in association with IQAC, Asutus College, to commemorate the World Philosophy Day. The seminar entitled Living Morally, Philosophical Explorations in Buddhist Ethics. In the very beginning, I would like to start in the negative sense. First two terms of the title, Living Morally, are very touchy. And side by side, 
paradoxical too. How can one live morally if he wants to live? Who will judge morality nowadays? Rishi Vankim Chandra Chattapadhyaya. Sorry. Rishi Vankim Chandra Chattapadhyaya said, X is a rich person. Quote unquote, border look. And Y is a small fry, Chotter look. Do you like to know reason? He answered, X does have idea about the art of stealing. So X is called rich. On the contrary, Y does not have. Therefore, Y is called total oak, small fry. Great orientalist and a buddhologist, Maha Mahapadhyaya Haraprasad Shastri, wrote an essay named Oil, in English, oiling. What he said, if you have vidya, <coughs> you have to know the art of oiling. If you have buddhi, you also have to know the same. And if you have money, I must not comment, because each and every drop of oil must have huge power to upgrade you. I remember T.S. Eliot, the name of the poetry is The Rock. Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? We do not have wisdom. We are searching. We are searching on and on. Day in and day out. Where is the life? It is the question. We have lost in living. We do not have life. We are earning. And the young generation are trying to run fast in the house of the customer through the companies of Suigi and Jomato. So, life also is lost. In reality, is it not true? People are searching truth. Actually, from Buddha to Vankesh Bhakshi, from Sankara to Udayana, from Ramanuja to Sri Chaitanya Deva, searching truth. And philosophers, they are highly engaged in eliminating truth from false. I am deeply hurt in saying that although India has light of Asia, that is Buddha, India has also violence. We have a face and we have mask too. Asmagam Mukha Musti, 
अस्माक मुख से अभी दृश्यते We have Buddha, yet we have Kastism. So I am glad in saying, side by side, that this is high time to rethink Buddhist ethics. Buddha was primarily an ethical teacher. And reformer, not a metaphysician. He raised his voice against the social caste of, against dogmatic convention. He was dissatisfied with the way. in which religion was practiced in those days he condemned the rituals how khichdi will be cooked where the leaf of tulsi be placed as because these customary rituals cannot pave the way of truth he taught by conversation in saying one must perform work after much deliberation it was also said by lord krishna in shrimad bhagavad gita in the very last chapter iti te gyana makhatam gujhat gujhatarang maya vimrishya eta dashi sena yatha ichchusi tatha kuru take the term vimrishya as was said by buddha after much deliberation you do whatever you like once he became enlightened he spent himself in the service of humanity he taught us whatever is made is non eternal so do not think about heaven or hell सर्ग काम जजेत इट वॉज आवर स्ट्रिक्चर इफ यू गो टू हेवन देन यू हैव टू परफॉर्म सेक्रीफाइस एंड इन सेक्रीफाइस यू हैव टू गिव गोल्ड कॉइन्स सिक्सटी टू थाउजेंड फॉर टेन ग्राम्स एट प्रेजेंट आइडिया बट ब्लाइंडली almost all of us would like to perform sacrifice he mentioned nothing is permanent your chair organized the fair your car your beloved bar at the wedding your name your fame nothing will exist and in the long run when you will be able to realize that all is eternal 
all is not eternal, then you will have no time. So please consider, what are you doing? And yukti hi ne vichare ku dharmahani prajayate. As we have seen in our Indian philosophical text, as Kumaril Bhatt mentioned, Sarvasai Vahi Shastrasya Karvana Vapi Kasichit Yavat Prajanam Noktam Tavat Tat Kena Vijjate. So you have to know before performing sacrifice. So what is the purpose of sacrifice? <coughs> Buddha inspired in saying, all of us, that we are pure. We are pure by birth. Janmana Vayang Sarve Suddha. By birth, all of the human beings, no stain is found there. But those who are Brahmanas, those who are upper caste members, they dictated, they wrote Brahmana, Khatriya, Vaishya, Sudras Chaddija Sattama, Padaru Mukhas Thalada Mukhatas Chasamudgata. Where from Sudras are born? From the feet of Brahman. Is it true? Is it possible? If it be possible, then not a single apartment would stay where important couple may be seen. A book was published by the Gold Park, Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture. Cultural Heritage of India. So many volumes there are. And in the second volume, it is mentioned, O Pandey, having indicated Brahman by caste, O Pandey, why are you so sensitive to touch? Of touch, the whole world is born. So how are you a Brahmin and I a Sudra? Is there blood in you and water in me? No one was in India to raise, to lodge his protest in this language. Yatya Brahmanatyam Kadapina Sikriyate. Brahmanatyam, by your activities, by your daily behavior, by your gestures. So, Janmana Brahmanatyam was ignored by Lord Buddha. As because all of the human beings are pure by birth. Not only that, so advanced Buddha was. And uh, as per his advice, all philosophical schools are also enlightened in saying, 
who told you that your name is X? My name is Amit. Who told? My parents that your name is Amit. So the name is superimposed. Realize what kind of attitude and what kind of magnitude Lord Buddha had. Who told? It was superimposed. Then you do not have any name. I have name. Who told that you are belonging in Kasyapu Do you not have? Yes, I have. I have name. I have Gatra. I have Rupa. Everything I have. But Lord Buddha said no. His philosophical schools are teaching. No. Buddhist philosophers, as per advice given by Lord Buddha, mentioned Deshotte Samupasritya Buddhyanam Dharma Deshana Loka Sangbriti Satyamcha Satyamcha Paramarthika. These all are not false, but conventionally, these are true. Actually, they do not bear ultimate truth. So, they sotte sam upasvita. In Vedanta, there are three kinds of truth. In Buddhism, Sangritikshat and Paramartikshat. So, we all are living, roaming, Traveling, doing, acting in our conventional world. Please remember all these things before you are acting. Buddha sat under a tree and people assembled. Shishyaha, Dicha Chatraha, Eta Triva, Upustitaha, Agatavandaha. Lord Buddha said, Sabbang Shunnam, all is void. Some of the students departed. They wrote hundreds of books on the theory of no other. Some of the students also raised the question, Sir, O oh Lord, if Sarvang Shunyam, then how can you realize Sarvang Shunyam? Shunyatya musti chet, katham geyate bhavata, kimo pi nasti, kimo pi nasti, all is void, void. How can you detect Tathastu? Knowledge does exist. Jnana Musti, Jnana Vina, Sarvam So another school of philosophy, Buddhist school. They also moved and wrote hundreds of books on Vigyanavada. Next, who are they? That is the question. If Gyanamasti, if knowledge does exist, then object of knowledge be admitted. Tathastu. Lord was just so flexible as our Indian constitution is. 
so flexibility he did have. He admitted, Kutra Gaina Mosti Alaya Adhar Ui the Noar Sha Sautrantika, another school of Buddhist philosophy. They started in writing their books, and hundreds of books are written. Actually, Indian philosophy is so enriched that in this system, we do find a universal model of inquiry into truth. And the model was, there are four pillars in this model. One is the process of knowing, pramanam, and if process of knowing is clear, then we do not run for hell and heaven. Rationally, we shall consider, is it true or is it false? Next, Prameya, object of knowledge. And then Pramaka, the Noah. And uh, lastly, Pramiti, consequence of knowledge, Gyanasya Phalam. So, Pramanam, Pramayalikam, Pramata, and Pramiti. And gradually, bit by bit, not only philosophers, scientists also do admit that actually, in acquiring knowledge, these four are highly necessary and pertinent. In the very beginning of Indian history, Lord Buddha paved the way of mutual deliberation, which we do not find nowadays. I do not like to focus totally all over on our Indian attitude. I do like to focus in our state to mutual deliberation, lack of mutual deliberation we do have. Idanim asmakam siksha vyagusthayam because of our great conflict is going on. And due to this reason, total education system is being collapsed. But Lord Buddha, what he reminded us, you can solve any problem through mutual deliberation. There are four noble truths mentioned by all the speakers and will be mentioned too which lead the path to liberation. Moksha Shakriti, Nibbana Shakriti. Life is full of suffering. Jivane Dukkha Mosti. Na Sandeha. There is no doubt of doubt. Dukkha Mosti. Sarve Sang Vana Vanaang Jivane Dukkha Vago Mishrati. There is a cause of suffering too. Dukkha Mosti, Dukkha Mosti, Iti Uktua, Ganga Kinare, 
विवायां हस्तक्षेपं कृत्वा किं वयम् उपविशामः नेवर एस बिकॉज वी हैव लॉर्ड बुद्ध दुख से कारण मस्ती इट इज पॉसिबल टू स्टॉप सफरिंग दुख से निरोध संभव इधर कथा सेकेंड इज जल्प कथा एंड एन अंदर इज वितंडा कथा नाउ व्हाट इज बाद कथा बाद कथा मतलब डिस्कोर्स टू अराइव एट द ट्रूथ नो कॉन्फ्रेंटेशन नो कॉमोशन इन द ऑडियंस नो व्हिस्परिंग That is called वाह कथा. Next जल्पो कथा. Only disputation. There is जाया and पड़ा जाया. But वितंडा कथा also we have negative attitude of finding fault without giving any positive solution. That is called वितंडा कथा. We are habituated. If you switch on in the evening in your drawing room, then you see that some of the speakers they are sitting and shouting each other to establish his or her views. This is not the way. so art of argumentation that indian philosophy bears holds should be kept in mind we must concentrate ourselves on the fourth noble truth for eight steps are recommended by buddha called astanga marga सम्यक दृष्टि संकल्प वाक कर्मांत आजी व्यायाम स्मृति एंड समाधि आई एम स्टॉप्ड इन डिस्कसिंग इन द वेरी फास्ट पॉइंट सम्यक दृष्टि डू यू हैव टिल डेट नो If we say yes, it will be entitled as false. No perfect vision we have. We are running. We are hankering. Those who are willing to hike themselves, some of them are running towards Vikas Bhavan, and some of them are towards Rajyog Bhavan. No perfect vision. Only to hold the chair. Samak sankalpa. Do we have those who are students sitting here? They may consider unless. one does have conviction or perfect sankalp as lord buddha had ihasane sushatu me shariram tagasthimang sang pralayam cha jatu aprapo bodhin bahu kalp durlabhang nai vasanat kayam atas chalishyate do we have right speech samag vak we are habituated in speaking faults we are habituated in circulating fake news but tegor said mora bujhi bosot puji bosot khunji bosot dhan jay jay sotter jay 
However, the point that I wish to highlight here is that why do leaders of our country use hate speech? Although we have some mugwak, we do not have Sabdanu Sahasanam. Next, Shabma Karmantha, right conduct or action. Right conduct includes the Panchida. It was mentioned by speaker. And the five brothers for desisting from killing, stealing, sensuality, lying and intoxication. All of you will be happy that in our state, by selling liquor, we are earning and we have received first class, first position across the country. Next, Shammak Ajiva, right livelihood. This rule tells that even for the sake of maintaining one's life, one should not take a forbidden means, but work in consistency with good determination. Sammak Vyam, right effort. It indicates a constant effort to root out all difficult thoughts. Asmakam Manasi Chinta Dayamasti. Good and bad. Sankalpatmak Chinta and Vikalpatmak Chinta. As an educationist, as a student, as a philosopher, as a doctor, each and every person should consider whether his work is actually correct or not. And lastly, Samak Samadhi, right concentration. This is very, very intricate topic, Samak Samadhi. Those who do not have previous six or seven margas, they cannot imagine or think or measure the last stage, Samak Samadhi. Nowadays, not a single student is there who has no watch in his or her wrist. Every student has. But see, the word watch is formed by five letters. W, A, T, C, H. And each letter is giving you a great, great lesson. W denotes, so what's your word? Prescribed by Lord Buddha. In Kathate Bhavata, what are you speaking? Next, watch your action. W A T, watch your thought. Kachinta Vartate Vaduna. Oh, what are you this time? Mom, on a honatra. No one should do this. And see what's your character. Then age what's your heart. It is very difficult. Buddha came to fulfill and not to destroy. His education is totally inclusive education. Brahmana, Khotriya, Vaishya, Sudraha. No casteism was there. He eradicated. The intellectual class of the society, mostly coming from the Brahmana and Khotriya families, welcomed and accepted Buddhism. Sariputta, Pachayana, Mahakasupa, Ananda, Bimbishara, Ajatasattu, and in the gallery of we may cite the name of Nagarjuna, 
মৈত্রীয়নাথ অসঙ্গ বসুবন্ধু দিগনাগ ধর্মকীর্তি শান্তিদেব বিনীত দেব শান্তরক্ষিত কমল সিং জ্ঞানশ্রী অ্যান্ড সো মেনি দ্য বুদ্ধ ওয়াজ পার হ্যাভ দ্য ফার্স্ট হিস্টোরিক্যাল পার্সোনালিটি হু সাজেস্টেড হিজ অডিয়েন্স টু লিসন টু হিম বাট টু ফলো হিম ওনলি ইফ অ্যান্ড হোয়েন কনভিনসড and he categorically mentioned that attahi attan nath try to be your guide you yourself the following characteristics of buddhism make it sufficiently clear that buddhism is really a unique world view and a way of living in order to ensure man's dignity and autonomy it disbelieves in the existence of creator god srishti sthiti vinasanang as we declared rejected by lord buddha and uh, not only rejection he also has given in front of us a suggestion theory of origination that is called pratitya samutpad oh the pain is there why as because i strike asmin sati idam bhavati so simple his presentation was karone vartamane sati karyam bhavet if there is cause then the effect it stands for tolerance adjustability peaceful coexistence non violence flexibility and friendliness without limitation buddha encourages the sense of mutual understanding and cooperation among various religious domini- denominations killings ethics as a necessary precondition of gradual development niti naitikatang bina manav jivane safallam na agamet na agamishati and he stressed on our mind all of you know as in the dhammapada very fast Vars is there, mano pubbang gama dhamma, mano setya mano vaya. In all the scriptures also we find this kind of elaboration. But Buddha, in the colloquial language, presented himself. Buddha highlighted that never consider god is a sultan who is sitting on the sky and dictating you purely scientific thought is disclosed in philosophy two terms are very important one is attachment and another another is detachment one is pravritti another is nivritti it is said janami dharmam nachame pravritti i know the path of religion but i do not have desire to follow the path janami adharmam nachame nivritti it, it it is also said by tegor as because the, he was one of the most admirer of lord buddha quote unquote from noi vedda basonare kharbo kori dauhe pranesh she sudhu sangram kare loye ek lesh brihater sathe basonar khudro rajyo kori ekakar daumore santosher moha adhikar so now to acquire santosh 
we had to sit in front of the lotus feet of Lord Buddha. <laughs> A truly religious man has to perform things which cost him a lot. As the Buddha did, he gave up his palace, his kingdom, his wife, his child, because religious life is something that costs us enormously. It is not something which we can purchase from a grocery or South City Mall or from Axis Mall or from any medicine shop. It is something which you can get passing through stern discipline. Most of us practice religion, go to temples, church, etc. Et considering that we are religious, but in our hearts all the time there are irreligious things. So rectification is essential for upgradation and to upkeep the torch of civilization. In modern judiciary system, we find the three D. First D is called a doubt. If you attend court, then you can be able to see doubt and then debate, and then decision. So it is called 3D system. Bodhna Darsane, in cultivating Buddhist philosophy, we have seen that Sangshaya, Takka, Siddhanta, Sarvesham, Pramayadinam, Tatrigo, Kustiti. Now, I have to control myself. Mitaṅca sāraṅca vachohi bhagmita. It is said by Sri Harsa in Naisadha Charita. It may be said, ages will roll on. No names will become prominent. But Lord Buddha, will come into existence, Lord Buddha will stay and will shine as before with ever increasing luster and brilliancy. Thanking all of you for patience hearing, I would like to conclude here. Sarve Sukhina Santu, Sarve Santu Niramaya. In Pali, Sabbe Sukhina. May all of you be happy. Samapate Adhuna. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful, enlightening lecture. Dr. Amit Bhattacharya has enlightened us on what it means to live morally in Indian culture. He has compared different views of morality in the Indian tradition and has outlined the Buddhist view of the cause of sufferings and ways to attain liberation. Thank you, sir, again. We will now disperse for a tea break of 10 minutes.
and we'll again assemble here for our first academic session. Thank you.
বন্ধু আগে বন্ধু তোকে আগে রাখতাম পাড়ার কিছু চাই না বাই পাহাড় বয়স করি না উঠে না এটা কাল বুঝে বাবার থাকে বাবার ওই দেখে ভাই <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
of the relationship between man and nature has an important role in our uh, uh, in uh, respect of ethics that is uh, uh, i will try to show that the buddhist thinkers uh, felt that you know, if we look at nature we will get many uh, uh, many views or many uh, uh, things which will enable us to develop our compassion our feeling of um, attachment for others as proloyankar had uh, said in the morning how to move from the egoistic to the altru egoism to altruism this very notion this uh, um, uh, moving movement from our egoistic thought to altruistic thoughts this we can have if we look at the man nature relationship according to the buddhist with uh, with these remarks i am just uh, going to read out my uh, the points which i have written here in indian tradition especially in buddhism the gulf separating man from the other species of animals was not so wide as it has been in the west because we always tried to distinguish the man from the lower animals by regarding man as a rational animal that is man is superior because man has rationality so there is a gulf between man and lower animals but in india this sort of gulf or this sort of gap between man and uh, lower animals whom i am referring to as nature right here because nature consists not only of trees or other things but also of um, uh, lower animals and even inanimate objects all of them are per constitute nature the general idea reiterated in the different upanishadic texts is that the individual atman is one with the universal brahman this brahman force is manifest uniformly in the divinities of heaven and human and animal and plant life on earth since all beings embody the cosmic power that is that ultimate brahman they are not merely equal or brothers but they are one thus the early scriptures of the hindus maintain that fundamentally all life is one and that this oneness finds its natural expression in a reverence for all living beings other systems of thought that is in the upanishads we find the idea that everything that we see in the world including the devotas or the human beings or even the lower creatures they are the manifestations of one supreme brahman okay so all since all of them are manifestations of one brahman we can have a sort of reverence towards them but other uh, uh, schools of thought for example the buddhists who do not believe in such eternal uh, one brahman huh? then how will they uh, uh, how will they react Uh, or how will they conceive about this relationship other systems of thought mm, who do not i think uh, this is visible to everyone mm? no other systems of thought who do not believe in such monistic ideas of oneness 
also hold that the variety of animals, plants, creepers, and even microorganisms like bacteria that go to make up our natural world work together in ecosystems to form an intricate web to maintain balance and support for everything in nature that is needed for our survival, like food, water, medicine, and shelter. The Indian mind believes in the concept of a total universality, which covers all living creatures, both above and below human beings. And it is this totality which constitutes the very essence of Indian tradition. Not only in philosophical thoughts, in our literature also, we find close relationship between man and nature. As for example, in the text Shopuntala, where it is shown that the trees rejoice at the news of the marriage of Shokuntala. And the lower animals, like the deer, shed tears when Shokuntala was leaving the hermit of Sage Konno. This account of man nature relationship took on new shapes in the hands of later philosophical schools of India, especially in Buddhism and Jainism. Recognizing non-violence as one of the essential values, both the schools offered justifications and arguments to establish the relation between man and the cosmos. In texts like the Ogoyo Sutta, the Brahmojala Sutta of the Buddhas, and the Acharanga Sutra, Dasabhoikalika Sutra, Uttaradhyayana Sutra of the Jainas, close relationship among the different life forms in the natural world has been discussed. Now, though I have here mentioned the texts of both Buddhism and Jainism, because of shortage of time, I will not touch upon any of the Jaino texts, but uh, I will focus only on the Buddhist view. Let us first, in order to understand the Buddhist view regarding the relationship between man and nature, let us first understand their theory of evolution. One of the basic features of nature, according to the Buddhists, is its changing character, onichata. The world is said to be dynamic because by it, uh, the world that is loco uh, is said to be dynamic because by etymology, it is something which disintegrates. Lujyoti iti loko. Though change is inherent in everything, Buddhism believes that the world as we see it is actually the result of human vices. The Ogoya Sutta of the Digho Nikayo provides us with a new account of the evolution of the world. As a result of such of the moral blemishes, the delicious edible art substances disappeared. And just a minute. Mm. Mm. The Ogai Ogoyo Sutta of the Digho Nikayo points out that in the beginning, beings were mind made, feeding on delight. They were self-luminous, moving through the air. There were neither moon nor sun, no constellation or stars. Night and day were not distinguished, no months and fortnights. There was no gender discrimination among beings. 
they were simply recognized as beings. This continued until greed entered their minds. This caused the gradual loss of their radiance and their ability to move through the air and subsist on joy. As a result of such moral blemishes, the delicious edible arc substances disappeared, leaving place to edible mushrooms and other kinds of consumable objects. In the successive generations among the beings subsisting on such vegetation, sexual difference developed and the earlier process of spontaneous birth was replaced by sexual reproduction. Then in the process of evolution, paddy started growing and people started growing food for each meal. But some people out of laziness started hoarding food rather than collect each meal. As a result, the growth rate of food could not keep pace with the demand. Then occurred the process of distribution of land among the families. That is, there started private ownership of pro properties. When such private ownership became the order of the day, the greed in men impelled them to rob from the fields of others. When they were detected, they started lying. Thus, out of greed, vices like lying and stealing developed. To curb the wrongdoers and for their punishment, a king was elected. Thus, the original simple society started to become complex. Then started the formation of classes in society. But uh, yeah, I should just simply mention that though there, uh, uh, there was class distinction at, uh, in the Buddhist society, there we do not have the Brahmins as the first class, but they were the Khotriyas because the term, very term Khotriyo indicates that they were the, uh, selected for looking after the Khetros, that is the after the fields. And since these people were, by looking after the uh, fields and the crops, these people were able to uh, please others. And since they were able to please others, they were regarded as Raja. Uh, so in this way, the concept of kingship uh, occurred in the society. In nature, now this is what I, uh, 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 this is the fact about the development of human beings. In nature also, change was visible. The richness of the earth diminished and there were no longer any self-growing riches. People had to work hard to grow rice. The rice grain was coated in shaft and needed through thorough cleaning before consumption. The moral of this account of origination is that although change is inherent in nature, the moral deterioration of beings accelerates the changes bringing about circumstances which are harmful to human well-being and happiness. That moral degradation of human being has disturbing influence on the natural world has been recognized in the early Buddhist texts. In the Onguttaro Nikayo 1.160, Buddha has explained that it is because of the increase of lust, greed, 
and wrong values in humanity that rain does not fall in time, having as its consequence the facts of plant disease and crops falling victim to pests. Such lack of nourishing food results in the rise of human mortality rate. These instances show that early Buddhism believed in close relationship between human morality and natural environment. In later commentarial literature, like the Ottoshalini, theory of five natural laws have been admitted, namely Utu Nyomo, that is, uh, uh, this is a Pali word, Utu, Utu actually refers to Ritu in Sanskrit. So it is Ritu Nyomo, the law of seasons, Bijo Nyomo, law of seeds, Chitta Nyomo, law of mind, Kommo Nyomo, law of action, and Dhommo Nyomo, law of phenomena which may be interpreted respectively as physical law, biological law, psychological law, moral law, and causal law. Of these five laws, the first four have their own respective field of operation, but the last one is operative in all of them. The commentary on the Chakravati Sihonado Sutta of the Digonikaya explains the mutual dependence of human morality and environmental degradation in a more elaborate way. There, it has been observed that when humanity is covered through the veils of greed, ignorance, and delusion, the inevitable results become respectively feminine an epidemic. When hatred becomes a guiding factor, widespread violence is the ultimate outcome. Greed, hatred, and delusion produce pollution within human beings and also in the outside natural world. As immorality grips society, people and nature deteriorate. This is the contention of Buddha's declaration, Chitteno Nyoti Loko, the world is determined by the mind. The close relationship between man and natural world, especially with the trees, has been emphasized by Lord Buddha again and again in his different sermons. To cut a living tree or to break its branches, to tear its leaves, have been considered to be punishable offenses. Pachityo kommo, that is kormo, which is prayoshityo, for which we have to do some sort of prayoshityo. In the Sigalobada Sutta, Buddha advises the householders to be like a bee, just as the bee collects nectars from the flowers without harming the fragrance and beauty of the flower, similarly, human beings should make legitimate use of nature so that they can rise above nature and realize their own innate spiritual potentiality. The Koronio Metta Sutta prescribes practicing metta or loving kindness towards all creatures, timid and bold, long and short, big and small, minute and gross, visible and invisible, near and far, born and unborn. Hence, reverence is to be cultivated towards all. Je kechi pano bhutotthi tasa ba khabara anobasesa digha ba ye mahanta ba majjima rasokanu kathar hala. 
uh, the world vaj the world which is called by them the vajano loko is thought by the buddhists to be arranged as follows below due to the dominance of the actions of sentient beings there is a wide of uh, there is a wide world of wind which rests on space immeasurable in circumference solid with a high, uh, with a height of uh, 1600000 and this uh, this, uh, this part is not very important but this part is important from the moral perspective mission of the doctrine of karma karma in pali and uh, admission of the doctrines of karma and rebirth is at the back of the buddhist view of <coughs> sorry compassionate attitude towards nature according to this belief all the beings are born in the six realms as a result of their past karma or actions so it is quite possible that what appears to us as a lower animal at the present moment may have been one of our close relatives in the past hence the advice is to treat every being with kindness and sympathy the buddha recommended that very simple act of us is able to lend a helping hand to tiny creatures for instance throwing the remainings of one's food plate into the waters of a lake can feed the small creatures residing there and such simple trivial acts can help the individual accumulate spiritual merit the jataka stories offer plenty of instances in this regard mention may be made of the story of mochudano jataka where in one of his previous births the buddha would be threw his left over food into the river to feed the fish and by the power of that merit he was saved from an impending disaster thus in respect of spiritual progress the buddhist observation is that when a man gives his merit will increase no enmity can grow in the self restraint those who are skilled in applying the buddhist teachings to the different circumstances of life can shun evil and by putting an end to greed and hatred and delusion are able to attain liberation or nirvana in the onguttara nikaya lord buddha has advised that a wise person does not intend harm to self harm to others or harm to both self and others thinking in this way such a person intends benefit for self for others for both and for the whole world thus is one wise and proceed towards great wisdom moha prajna thus enlightened for the buddhist is not anything mystical state where visions of on earthly bliss get unfolded it is rather a revelation of the true nature of everything revelation of the knowledge of mutual dependence of every being on some other living being when this insight grows in a person he feels nothing but a sense of oneness with all his mind glows with the lights of compassion and love
Shanti Devo, an 8th century Buddhist thinker of the Prasangika school of Madhyamika thought, gives expression to the spirit of oneness in a very poetic manner. He says that the body, by splitting up the hand and so on, has many parts. Yet, it is to be preserved as one. So likewise, the world divided into parts is undivided, since everything is composed of sorrow and of joy. Another sorrow is to be destroyed by me because it is a sorrow like my own sorrow. Others also are to be favored by me because their creaturehood is like my creaturehood. Hastadi vedeno bohu prakara kayo jathoika poripalo niya tatha jagad vinnam avinno dukho sukhat makam sarvam idam tathaiva maya onno dukham maya onno dukham hantabhyam dukho tvat atma dukho bat onugrajya maya onnepi sato tvat here, actually, we find a logical argument justifying the conclusion that all the living beings, all, uh, that, sorry, all the beings of this world stand on the same level in spite of there being lots of difference among them. The case is compared to that of a human body where there exists difference among differences among the different limbs. The argument runs thus. Just as the hands and the legs, in spite of being different in respect of structure and function, are considered to belong to one body, similarly, the different beings belonging to different worlds are considered to be one because all of them experience the same pleasure and pain. Thus, what follows is that all beings are identical because they all experience the same pleasure and pain. Accepting this as one premise and then adding as a second premise the fact that Whatever is of the nature of pain and suffering needs to be removed as my own pain and suffering. The conclusion that follows is, it is my duty to remove the sufferings of others. The Buddhists do not simply speak of extending loving kindness to beings of all the different worlds or to the vegetable kingdom as one's duty. But they go a step further and holds that all these other beings are in no respect inferior to humans. On the contrary, each of them has some special quality, which, if learned, will help the individual, that is the individual human being, to proceed in a spiritual journey. In this respect, all these so-called lower beings will have to be regarded as his guide. With regard to such an admission, the Buddhists may be considered as one step advanced than the modern-day environmentalists. For this latter group will recommend exhibition of non-violence, non-hearting towards other beings. But they will not recognize these lower beings as someone whom a human needs to follow. In the chapter entitled Opammo Katha Ponho of the text Milinda Ponho, translated as The Questions of King Milinda, a list of 105 beings are given, which consist of both gross and subtle, animate and inanimate, 
vegetable objects as also lower animals. When the king Milinda inquired the Vikshu Nagosheno about the qualities which an individual has to possess in order to attain the stage of an orhot, the monk referred to a list of some unique qualities so that they can become a superior being. In this list, we have mentions of inanimate objects like ocean, earth, shape, wind, rock, fire, iron, moon, rain cloud, sunshade, rice field, etc. Similarly, there is mention of lower beings like crow, cock, ass, squirrel, tortoise, monkey, white ant, cat, rat, spider, etc. And also of human beings of different lower professions like carpenter, hunter, fisherman, etc. Nagoshino explained that each of these so-called lower beings possess one or more good quality which any individual needs to attain. In another famous text of the Theravada tradition, namely Theravada, the mendicants like Sariputta, Muha, Muggolayano and others have shared their experiences regarding how the environment itself helped them learn many good qualities <coughs> like non-attached joy, fearlessness, energy, and full enlightenment. In that respect, they are ready, they means the Buddhists, are ready to accept the environment itself as a teacher. The atmosphere prevalent in the forest have been regarded to be a suitable place for the training to start with the process of concentration. Later on, Shanti Devo, in his Compendium of Buddhist Doctrine, Shiksha Samuchayo, has devoted a whole chapter in forest seclusion. There it has been said that he who longing for wisdom for the sake of all beings disgusted with all bad things should make the seven steps towards the forest. Leading a solitary life in the forest for some time will enable the person to become excellent in merit. The reason has been provided in the same text thus. Staying in the forest, in the midst of herbs, bushes, plants and trees, will enable the householder to overcome all kinds of fear. Just as the herbs and bushes, the plants and trees growing in the forest are neither afraid nor fall into panic, so the householder and the bodhisattva dwelling in the forest must realize that his body is like the herbs and bushes, plants and trees, like an apparition, nothing but illusion. So there is nothing to be afraid of. As herbs and bushes, plants and trees grow in the forest without sense of self or possession, so can the householder have the feeling that he is without Thus, without a sense of possession, recognizing and realizing that all things are like the forest. Thank you. Okay. 
if by cutting trees, killing animals, making blood flow, we attain salvation, what is the way to hell? It is mentioned by the speaker, Professor Chattopadhyay, that these are punishable offense, but who will punish? From every punishable offense, Katmani is received. So there are so many rules. In this regard, I must advise my students to read the book, which is very pertinent, named The Positive Sciences of the Ancient Hindus, written by Acharya Brajendranath Shil. He made a classification of plants, having mentioned Charaka, Susruta, Chakrapani, Prasastapada, Udayana, and above all, the Navindu Tika of Dharmattara notices the phenomenon of sleep in certain plants. The Jain writer Gunaratna, in the commentary of Sardarsana Samucha, the name of the commentary is Tarka Rahusa Dipika, 1350 AD, categorically said, the sensitiveness to touch of a plant. Chakrapani said, Anta Sangha Bhavanti Ete Sukha Dukha Samanita. Maybe Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose also marched forward to upkeep the torch of civilization in this regard. So plants also are capable of pleasure and pain and man and nature both are inseparable indeed. Philip her stock Tattva Kathas and in all Tattva Kathas this relationship is described in explaining man-nature relation. Professor Chattopadhyay has nicely mentioned this relation as a quote-unquote spiritual journey. Having quoted Jatakas, Nikayas, Shariputta, Shantideva, speaker has established our views clearly. So million of thanks to Professor Chattopadhyay for delivery her pertinent deliberation regarding man-nature relationship as reflected in the Buddhist ethics. Thank you all of you. I would like to conclude. Thanks to everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam, for your wonderful deliberation on the holistic aspect of Buddhist ethics, upholding the ideal of non-violence. I would like to say a few words about Modhumita, Professor Modhumita Chattopadhyay, our beloved Modhumita Di. Professor Modhumita Chattopadhyay teaches philosophy at Jadupur University. She is also the coordinator of the Center for Buddhist Studies, Jadupur University. She also officiated as the Dean, Faculty of Arts, Jadupur University in 2021. Professor Chattopadhyay has been well trained in both Western and Indian philosophical traditions. 
Her area of specialization in Buddhist philosophy with emphasis on Buddhist epistemology, logic, and semantics is well appreciated. She has authored four books on Buddhism and contributed articles in peer-reviewed national and international journals. Of the different books written by her, we can mention a few, like Walking Along the Paths of Buddhist Epistemology, Ragnakirti on Apoha, Nagarjuner Darshan Porikrama, Torko Bhasha of Moksha Karagupta. She has also been awarded Fulbright Fellowship in 2004, Charles Wallace Indian India Trust Fellowship in 2008, Indo-Hungary Exchange Program in 2002, and JSPS Fellowship in 2010. She was a fellow of Indian Institute of Advanced Studies, Shimla. She has been awarded the Kentis Visiting Professor at Shavitribai Fule, Pune University in 2023. Thank you, Madam, again for your wonderful speech. Thank you, Chondima, for giving me the chance to come to your institute and speak something of my own interest. It's our pleasure, Madam. I uh, don't know whether the students could follow, but I tried my best to make it as simple as possible. Thank you. We now will disperse for a lunch break of half an hour and we will again assemble here for our second academic session. Thank you.
ਚੋਲੀ ਸੇ ग्रीन हो गया मतलब बोल सकते हैं सुन पा अच्छा बोल सकते हैं तब तक तो क्लोज करें अभी क्लोज करें हेलो हेलो एवरीबॉडी हस्ते एकदम हस्ते वेलकम यू ऑल टू द सेकंड एकेडमिक सेशन ऑफ अर सेमिनार nowadays everybody is talking about compassion from the therapists to the politicians and even the fashion brands but only buddhism says that without an experience of the wisdom that cuts through our deep sense of being separate from the others we do not really know what compassion is we are honored and extremely elated to have with us dr hari shankar prasad a former professor and head of the department of university of delhi he will deliver his lecture in the second academic session the session will be chaired by professor modhumita chatterji let me tell you a few words about dr prasad professor hari shankar prasad 
has retired from the Department of Philosophy, University of Delhi in 2018 after serving for 35 years. Professor Prasad was awarded Australian National University PhD scholarship to work under the supervision of Professor J.W. De Jong on the theme of the Buddhist concept of time, which is successfully completed and was awarded PhD degree in February 1982. Professor Prasad joined the University of Delhi as a faculty member in the Department of Philosophy. He was elite also the head of the Department of Philosophy, Dean of the Faculty of Arts. Besides, he was the chairman of the Research Board of Humanities, member of the Executive Council, and chairman of three undergraduate colleges. He has published six edited books and one independently. His, the centrality of ethics in Buddhism has been appreciated internationally. He has also published more than 40 research articles sailing against the current, the Buddha, Buddhism and methodology at, is his next independent book, which is in press currently. His independently written books, the idea of which has been developed in the 45 years of his academic career, are in progress. These are philosophy of time in Buddhism, the Indian theories of consciousness, and the Buddhist theories of meaning. I now request Professor Prasad to please. <laughs> To please come on the dais. And I also request Professor Modumita Chatterji to accompany him and to chair the session. Thank you. I now request. Professor Rina Kordotto, our colleague and associate professor in the Department of Philosophy, Ashutosh College, to felicitate Dr. Prasad. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for being with us. Over to you, sir. Okay, thanks. So you can Yeah, Thank you very much, all of you, my students, primary, uh, you can say that, for me, I'm here, uh, all the students. Uh, and at the same time, I'm grateful to the administration of this college and uh, all 
also my friends very uh, great scholars i prefer chairman sir in my lectures so that she can help me so ye to aap bhai itna tight kar diya ki main aisa hai na is tarah ke koi baat hai thoda zor se karenge philosophy is a very frightening word <laughs> very very frightening but once you are engaged then you will find that it's a most interesting very very so lots of things lots of doors are open in many cases i have been in trouble in the name of philosophy that i am a philosophy student what happened you see it's very dangerous if you introduce yourself as a student or teacher of philosophy and that twice i have suffered in the very beginning days when i was doing psd i was traveling in a train it was evening time near banaras and there was a great pandit traditional pandit say sanskrit pandit and i was discussing with him it was not crowded so i was discussing i was taking a buddhist position and he was taking a vedantic position <laughs> or he was very religious so i was giving the arguments although he was very severe to me anybody he was perhaps a 65 or 70 and i was at that time 25 or 27 like this one and he was accepting my argument the buddhism is not there but where is buddhi uh, sorry buddhism does not accept god but vedanta has or many other disciplines have so he was accepting i said that there is no evidence because in crisis god does not come to the help to the victim and you know that in this world i say that any any god in any religion never comes to the help to the victim that is one thing i'm not criticizing see see this is very important thing you know that uh, <coughs> nirbhaya's case you know nirbhaya case there was a, that it took i mean see that this kind of a brutality and nobody came to the rescue and even then this court system took 8 hours 8 years so god how to how to say that god if you are you are asking a question raising a question so what happened acha phone humne dekha hota to fayda anyway so what happened that there was a, a laborer in the train on the other side and face to face so we, we were not caring for him simply ignored because he was not a scholar perhaps silently after an hour one hour and half and i was facing that sanskrit pandit on the other side a little away before me that gentleman was there and he was very very strong etc and he was coming from the from the from the duty the track on the track he was and he had lots of his tricks etc all sorts of thing anyway <clears throat> then he stood up i did not care i simply i did not care. and then suddenly he jumped over me i say and then i was I, i i simply it was a very surprise and it hurt me how so that i was pushed back and then in bhojpuri original and then i said there e kaho u 
उसने कहा ई का हो तो दो घंटा से इज इट क्लियर ट्रांसलेट तो दो घंटा से देवता ऐसा आदमी ये पंडित जी के तो उनका दिमाग चाट गई <laughs> तो दिमाग चाट गई बरा हमने उसको समझाया बात पर समझा क्या बात समझी <laughs> एकदम चुप हो जा बस हमारा खून खोला था भगवान नहीं खान तो ये नहीं खान पंडित जी वृद्ध आदमी के इज्जत नहीं कर रहा क्वेश्चन करते रह एक शब्द बोले ला तो ये डंडा देखा था ना <laughs> दो डंडा मारे सब पंडित जी के सब बतिया मान लो अरे भाई ठीक है उसके बाद मेरी शादी का समय आ गया आई वॉज डूइंग माई पी एच डी एंड माई फादर इन लाइफ थॉट दैट आई वॉज गेटिंग डॉक डॉक्टर्स डॉक्टर है ना मैं डॉक्टर वी आर गेटिंग डॉक्टर फिलोसफी डॉक्टर एंड एवरीथिंग वाज हैविंग टू दैट माय सन इन लॉ विल बी ए डॉक्टर दिस एंड दैट और ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ थिंग एंड देन आफ्टर अ फ्यू वीक्स माय वाइफ्स आंटी मतलब बुआ केम टू नो दैट ही इज नॉट मेडिकल डॉक्टर मिस फिलोसफी डॉक्टर फिलोसफी एंड देन शी कंटैक्टेड माय फादर इन लॉ भैया आप सोच के अपना लड़की के एक फिलोसफी के स्टूडेंट से तू शादी कर देना बर्बाद कर दो जी <laughs> एक महीना दो महीना छ महीना साल भर से अधिक क्योंकि फिलोसफी वाला सब पागल हो जाए सर इट्स रियली इट्स वेरी एंगेजिंग You are enjoying, and you are enjoying. There are so many stories I am telling you, but I am not. I am just letting you know that you should not surrender. बहुत से लड़कियों की शादी इसलिए नहीं है कि फिलोसफी पढ़ के आ रही है सांस के तो दुर्दशा कर देगी. ये भी क्वेश्चन हूँ. So ये क्या? What is that? and at the same time philosophy is considered to be the mother kya kehta mother discipline hai na mother mother of all disciplines wow how anyway let me start like this my in my research has taken even for one article 10 months maybe that many years maybe that many decades so the my book it took 18 18 years the centrality of ethics in buddhism quite thick but still i am now i am not satisfied because i am in developing my own ideas this and that etc but this has been accepted as five five star marks by the google so this is a very satisfaction but now i realize that how come that and then the uh, springer also on sri arvindo and then sri arvindo sri arvindo wanted me to join the core group international so there was a very i said that i said that no i can't do that i can't do that enough is enough what happened there was a time when i was struggling with the ideas i wanted to i mean say something which which i wanted to do i was not actually succeeding then suddenly i'm very fond of teaching i never ask anybody in the family 
that you give me a glass of water and never i have asked my wife in 45 years or so never that i want to eat this food today never and never although i am satisfied no problem i never that plate i don't leave on the table i don't allow to touch my garments nothing because that is sufficient there are lots of reasons are also there that way then i i realized that before you enter into the kitchen but before that you decide what to cook okay you have in the mind this is the menu 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 and then you have to this is in, in the concept of your mind and then you enter into the kitchen and then you materially you arrange the entire thing okay and then so far the prakriti is concerned prakriti is there but i am also the product of prakriti my mother has our parents they have not created me in that way that i shall design my child like this at that and in nine months the extreme kind of pleasure and after nine years extreme kind of pain in the delivery hall i have seen when my son was born in canberra i was doing research i never accepted anybody congratulations because it was so painful i have seen the motherhood you see prakriti but what happened that this lady before me throughout the pregnancy i was watching and every moment i was in pain that what is happening and this lady went towards the end when she was on the birth and at the delivery uh, uh, and she was in a i mean those who are mothers here uh, i think they they real, must have realized that, that, that at the end it becomes very difficult that you are not in your senses something like that now the child when come out of the out then the doctor said because earlier my daughter was there already and here the doctor announced that here is the boy big boy healthy 8.5 or something like this one and then she is smiled i still today i i can't accept that how can she say how can she smile in such a pain through out this is called prasav peeda philosophy is prasav peeda in nine months the child comes kicks out i mean you see you can't a mother cannot keep the child for more than you can say nine month or so a week here this side or that side this is the prasav peeda and this has been compared for actually the deeper thinking which is not confined to nine months i'm telling you and that is prasav peeda puch lijiye inke article kitne saal lagi hai aapko नौ महीने वाली तो बात ही छोड़ी है उसके पास ऐसी इट विल शी विल किप गोइंग डूइंग डूइंग एंड डूइंग कुकिंग बॉडी स्कैंड यू मस्ट आई नो दैट मेनी सीनियर स्कॉलर्स हैव सेड लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स बट यू हैव टू यू हैव टू टेक एंड अनलेस अनलेस देयर इज अ जिज्ञासा इन ब्रह्मसूत्र भाष्य sutra in the very beginning the athato brahma jigyasa if you have no orientation if you have no taste if you are not this kind of feeling or jiti then you will not it why if you don't want to if you are in the big uh, sweet uh, sweet meat shop etc and then in that case if you are not interested in sweets so why will you go there and if you are interested then you will go around to find a shop sit shop okay so why not 
So this way, in the kitchen model, that what happens in the kitchen? You want to cook, you go in the cook. You want in the, I mean, this kind of way. So you have the menu, but with the menu, you go in the hotel, it happens, I'm telling you, that you have the menu already in your mind that I have to cook like this one. Vegetables, etc., chapati, panata, or halwa, something like, suppose, like this one. Then you enter. No, no, I, I can cook. What is that? It's very simple in the kitchen. You have the vegetable, you have the spice, and this one, this one, the cook, it will be cooked. But this is not simple. The grocery is there. 50 kinds of groceries, you can say, coming from the field after processing, you see, lots of processions, through procession. Lots of items are there. Then lots of spices are there. Lots of, you can say, lots of everything is there. But this is not so simple. It's not that if you are cooking rice, that it has the one whistle and then you close it. Or if it is, it's, it's I mean, sound is, is that very interesting. It's not that 10 times you are hearing the sound of the cooker or like, like this one. You can't do that. Two, maximum three. Stop. And that way, you have the vegetables, two kg. It does not mean that a two kg of a spices and two kg of a salt, etc. You can't do that. Let me give you another very blunt question, very disturbing, which no professor might have taught you like this. This, literally. You take your own system. Your system. There is a system. And the system is that my nose is here, two eyes are here, and the mouth is there, 32 or 30 teeth, and all these things are ready. Suppose one eye is here, another eye is on the back side, 32 teeth are all around, top to bottom. Now, you see, try to understand that there is a pattern. Now, this pattern has a system. Let me take my dress, for example. Now, how will you do this first time? And I mean, to begin with, we have the undergarments and then the then the socks, etc. and etc. in that sequence. And suppose you wear the sho shoes and then socks. If you have the shirt and coat and then the banayan, uh, banayan. you don't do that. All these th things are, there is a system. Philosophy is, demands this pattern. This pattern. And where to start? Let's suppose, for example, you are not a philosopher. Of course, you are not a philosopher. Before you join, even if you join, perhaps I'm not sure whether you are, you have understood philosophy, whether you have been taught how to manage this one. What, how, and when? These are the three questions. What do you want to do? How will you do? And when will you do? Pattern, you see pattern. Sabji banega, halwa banega, sari chije, to uska sequence hai sari chije dee. This is the methodology. That in that systematic manner, you will do that, you say, And in the cooking model, as I told you, that cooking model means that unless you have the sufficient groceries, spices, all sorts of things, even if you are trained in that cooking, and the items are not there, you can't do that. Likewise, unless you have, suppose for example, you want to be, uh, build a, a building, and you have 10 bricks, will you build up a building? 10 bricks? No. You must have 1 lakh, 10 lakhs, 50 lakhs bricks, and then all sorts of supporting areas. And then 
you will find likewise in your mind unless your ideas are rich and and they are building blocks you cannot play with the permutation and combination kind of game for example the same so if it, your teachers or etc whatever you also that all these building blocks now you have to you have to arrange them and in different formulation endlessly otherwise in number you have 1 2 3 9 and 1 0 that's all and endless infinite numbers you have like this one so unless you are rich enough to have all these building uh, you cannot play a design etc like this is it in prakriti also so far as prakriti is concerned there are five elements in vedant here akash is minus and this and that's this this is one thing another thing is that when you play a game there is a field on the one side 11 players on the this side 11 players and there is a boundary okay so you can't you can't play football anywhere you can kick anywhere you can take it away like something like this one so there is a boundary there is a boundary it's not that you are cooking in the big pot kadhai kehte hain na kadhai that you can't cook two kinds of things one side the vegetable on the other side halwa you can't do ye dono nahi chalega nahi chalta hai and that's why they the football is it and football cricket is it cricket and there is a boundary likewise whatever you idea you are developing that is called conceptual framework that you conceptual framework is that you have to play only that one and that's why you have seen that when when uh, uh, vadrans uh, sutra then he does not directly he does not directly comment on the first sutra he has adhyas adhyas you can say adhyas bhashya adhyas bhashya before that because this is the conceptual work here and also there is a you see you can't play there on the red light area that you are when all these things are there now you have you must have the terminology sufficient terminology what kind of language you use in what sense in meaning and then you have what kind of doctrines you have like for example suppose in buddhism is in a sequence and then the methodology so this way you have <coughs> that so these are so far as uh, this is the that you have to you have to get ready for that you have to get ready for that and if the ideas are in the in a, in the text then you must know the language for example so likewise so far as ethics is concerned or morality is concerned that is also applied in a particular context Well, in Europe, for example, in Christianity, in different contexts, social contexts, in the cultural area, for example, so our in India, in Buddhism, in Vedanta, etc., or in any way you can say also, if you have, you have this. This is not so easy. We have to confirm. The question is that that there is a segment of the humanity within that group you are playing. this kind of role for example this is now so many so many and buddha had this difficulty he had very difficult lots of difficulty for example let me start this one then i shall come to back when you call philosophy the world philosophy day it's a philosophy day it's not a darshan shastra day you know philosophy is that in the generally in the europe etc the west generally you have 
it's a lots of you can say the rationality is there all sorts of arguments are there all sorts of things are there and suddenly 500 years back it, it, during the time of uh, copernicus revolution which uh, challenged uh, uh, which challenged the uh, bible you can say the original bible is as and then there was a revolution lots of revolution lots of revolution you can say the lots of revolution and to such an extent that the most dis- destructive i am not saying the european says it that the brutality the brutality is you you will find in the modernity because individual extremely individual based you are you are free you have liberty you are this 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 all rights all are there that single you are all alone you are not the part of the society i mean or in the family or society or a political life there is or the nation etc lots of things are there and to such an extent that nietzsche he said that there is a god is dead we can stand very surprised if i am correct that he said that the neuro philosophy has come to an end so the philosophy is end something like this one there are many many questions now this if this is the question then greek has one 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 uh, you can say ethics suppose if i remember correctly and then then the latin it is the morality now in this case you see that now let us come <coughs> to the indian uh, uh, indian context for example in indian context you have a very different because you have you are taking the cosmic you take the hu- common humanity and you are taking and in many ways for example in vedanta suppose that there is a divinity common divinity is there the god is not separate <coughs> so this is this is that ye pani kaise chalai ke chale anyway so this way that that uh, both are sanatani sanatan means eternal eternal means is the world i mean this prakriti i am not saying that this is problem prakriti is brahman etc i am not bothering about this one i am i am i am not challenging but at the same time when you develop the doctrines too much uh, emphasis on this kind of the and then the entire so they have the indian system has the global actually global if if there is a, a, a warming system is there the whole world is disturbed and the way that they, the my approach to my approach to the non human beings animal or uh, nature etc and uh, she already take very fascinating uh, uh, idea of course uh, this one this this is this is that now the question is that my constitution is there and that is common whether it is a brahmic religions or whether it is a hindu system or any other system i in the common convert kar liya to ban gaya ya nahi hua to waise ban gaya to not some things say are there there so that system is there there's a, it's a, it has a, its own way of uh, doing like this for example yeah, i'm not questioning i i'm respecting everybody that's okay now in this one that i have to because i am uh, i mean vedantin they say that that the uh, uh, vasudha kutumba kam they say and they are the brahman atman is there buddha is not accepting buddha says that buddha hood is there enlightening that is epistemological they also claim the vinagund but that is because of because uh, because the self is him and he says that self is not a no self is there self is the very different kind of thing because it is the processional the river is flowing river is not uh, stating the flowing so the examples are there so that way that my focus is only on this one that you are potential if you are not you have the potential because you are graduating and that's why because right from the childhood you have cleared your examination now you are in a better position 
So everybody cannot participate in the examination or in the class in the UG, at UG, UG level, for example. Now this one, that Buddha had the way. He was 29 and he was watching the world. That everywhere there is a there is suffering. My health waves at him, my age is there, my birth, birth to death is, uh, is uh, and so many other things. Uh, that one is a child, one or the one conceived in the stomach of a, um, a mother's a master, uh, mother's a system, you can say. And then you have the growing system, the old and death, etc. The matter dense in between you have lots of diseases are there. You see, see there. Now the question is that. That what kind of constitution? If there is any God, why did he produce this kind of this kind of constitution, human constitution? And in the human constitution, the most you can say that the most how to say the most problematic organ is the antahkara, that is the mind actually. Mind is creating all sorts of problems. And mind is also a mind is also a silent one, isolated, beyond the beyond the ethics and anything. So that way you will find that in this one, in this one, what is wrong? Because you have your God. Because God is there. If they are, then in the name of God you can't do anything, everything. So you enlighten, then he he try to know that if Dukh is there, then there must be a solution. If God is not giving, then let me try to find a solution. Let us, all of us, find. And since it is struck, this is philosophy starts at the striking experience. This is the excitement, and this is the beginning of philosophy. This is philosophy. If you see a snake in the dark light in a street, suddenly you see, and you as a first person singular, you are recognizing that this is a, is, this is a snake. You, when you come second time, if you have that little skill, so if you bring a stick with a torch and your friend, and then you see that, okay, it's a snake, then you kill. But it also it can happen that it is rope. And then no one can say that let us go back. Let, let us go back. It was just like a Brahman confusion. But who did the confusion? Who created this problem? Is it the nature of the snake to appear as rope? Or is it the rope of the snake, rope, rope of the desert to become a snake? If you are blaming the objects and you are not finding problems inside you, and suppose the third time when you reflect, kisne kiya ye kaam kiya kisre? Saap apna kar deta to there will be no objective knowledge. My cognition is problematic. Inside the problem is, you are finding, you trying that, no, the problem is in me. Because nobody has taught me, nobody has narrated any story and then I have learned. is a first person, singular person. Uh, sorry, first <coughs> First person is a member. First person. And that way, if you find, then you have to blame yourself. This means that my system is there, cognition system is there, knowledge system is there. That is, that is problematic in my. And then you actually reflect on yourself. That is, you reflect on yourself easily. And that way you see, you find. So what happened that he moved to, one day moved to Magadh area. In Magadh, the two teachers, Alar Kalam and Uddak Ramaputta, they were two, they were training. But they were not in a hurry. Now, Buddha was... I mean, Siddharth. Siddharth was very much worried that if the problems are here, then solution should be here on this earth itself. And then he deserted from them, 
because they were they were they they, they, uh, they were not in hurry because the next next year next year here and there something like that all these arguments then he he became all alone and then he started thinking etc etc now in this one what happened that he he because other other yogis we are not a systematic the way we cook uh, and i gave you the example that if you want to cook that there is a system if you deserve yourself then that there is a system and in that way then he formulated the yoga is the first time first time in his life he has that how do you how you are already you are craving you have become craving trishna for example you have raga dosh moha you all these things are and who are responsible my eyes are responsible my mouth is responsible my ear is responsible okay my skin is responsible my tongue is responsible all these that is one thing and any object of that one so if i if i see a picture or a car etc i'm hearing a music for example i'm tasting something etc and that i am in a body touch and very very pleasant kind of thing then you are dragged towards the external world or in the mind the sixth one some kind of all these in the in the mobile you see there if you have not seen then one day i i saw the lots of things for example in facebook for example facebook i know facebook there then i found all sorts of things are there how can how can is the modernity and there is an extreme modernity i understand it and that's it but there's a limit alone all alone independent so it's coming from this one and then what happened suppose and he said that in this one because it's a very big one uh, uh, my research let's suppose i am seeing something okay i am seeing and then i am just closing my eyes how to withdraw from that <laughs> how to withdraw from that that is the starting point and then suppose i close my eyes eyes but is still that in that picture or that object i have seen it will not disappear not simply that you have you have the but if not the object is there directly then it is actually in image image is more dangerous <laughs> it is more dangerous that it will not go then what happens <laughs> that is called vitak vitak means vitark that there is something like this one then next one is a vichar vichar is actually in a sense a critical let me think whether that image in my dream or elsewhere etc whether that is true or not whether the corresponding object is lying there or not it's not there you are not there after many years you have memory so that way i'm <coughs> sorry गला जो है ना जोर से बोले भी नहीं फिलोसफी में अजी तो अभी तो आधा ही घंटा हुआ होगा पंद्रह मिनट नहीं टाइम है टाइम टाइम अभी सवा दो में शुरू किए ना हम लोग दो दस में तो हम लोग रसूला खाए हैं Two forty five. Two forty five. So because we have another lecture uh -huh. and then we have interactive. Session. Okay. Pacha interactive hoye the. Sir, I am okay. Now what happened? You know, ten fifteen minutes. Ten. So what happened? That this this one that it arguments. Now at that time the argument was used. Vipassana etc. There is a samatha vipassana, sati patthan etc. All these modes. You have to. You have to do. It's not a suddenly that you understand. No. If you have taken, you have seen a farmer's land. Have you seen anybody farmers? देखा है जहाँ उसकी पौधे होते हैं. It's very dirty after, and then you have lots of stones and the grass and all sorts of greenery and the when. 
there is a next decision then what he does or she does that clears all the stones all the grass unwanted one cleared that is clear otherwise all sorts of lots of things were there very <coughs> dangerous or very of no, of, of no use etc and that is called a spade work for example you clean but you don't leave the field after cleaning that removing all this thing so that is the plane so when you have rag dosh moh etc through meditation they have been declared empty i need i look i look that there do you see the table here anybody who is seeing ये देख रहे हैं कि टेबल देख रहे हैं बोलेंगे ही नहीं <laughs> ये देख रहे हैं ना हम मेरे को बहुत देख रहे हैं बहुत साधारण है ये यू आर लुकिंग एट दिस वन द पेपर बट दिस पेपर दिस पोर्सन देर इज नथिंग एक्सेप्ट दिस वन सो व्हाट आई वाज डूइंग दैट दिस इज योर आइडियाज superimposition you have the design you impose on that one so if you have found a system to clean field to clear ho gaya aur field clear ho gaya to kaise clear usko feka worthless ho gaya isi tarah aapka jo ideas hai wo worthless hua panch jo hai jo sari cheeze mind ke jo impositions hai the mind itself is self correcting तब उसको आ कह रहे हमने तो ऐसा कर दिया इसने किया तो इंद्रियों ने हमको भेजा वो सब अब इसको तो ऐसे देखिए अपने को आपको ऐसे उलटिए ओके अब ये धीरे धीरे पिक्चर आ रही है इसको धीरे 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 तो ये ये भी शून्य है और ये भी शून्य है ये इसलिए शून्य है कि इसका ऑन्टोलॉजिकल स्टेटस है ही नहीं माइंड से क्लियर कर दिया अरे नहीं नहीं गलती होगा आपने सही कर दी सब चीजें मन से निकल गया और ये इसलिए है कि इस पर लैंग्वेज नहीं यूज हो सकता है प्रपंच शून्यता और अध्यास हट गया आपने नॉलेज से उसको कर से कर दिया तो शून्यता ऑन बोथ साइड्स एक्चुअली एंड देन आई रियलाइज दैट ओके दिस इज एक्चुअली द मीनिंग ऑफ द शून्यता यू हैव एंड वेन यू हैव ऑल दीज राग दोस्त भोग एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा ऑल दीज थिंग्स when thrown out emptied and non ontological or non metaphysical etc non god <coughs> god centric etc all sorts of things and then is it and then he was he had more and then in the process you can say he was enlightened enlightened means that deeper inside because you don't know the you know you know the spatio temporal structure is there but in that one is that it's very pratitya samutpada paticca samutpada etc all those things are there you see in that way you see this one and then ultimately he realized now after for example all of you are studying your teachers are teaching you and when you are doing graduation so if you if you have learned from the teachers all sorts of things all sorts of things but i we will never expect that you become a criminal because that's a transformation is there your mind will never the good and evil evil is out good is there and now it is the field is there inside you so all sorts of virtues will come out itself your sensitivity for example you have the some kind of some the kind of uh, but we have a psychological that transformation will clear all these things because they are illusory they have been destroyed okay and that's why it will open now jisko aap peeda dete the jisko dete the usi ko main compassion de rahe hain karuna de rahe hain बिकॉज दूसरा था ही नहीं अल्टीमेटली पाइप को तोड़ दीजिए वो नलका छाटा कर नलका बनना था ना नलका थोड़ दी तो पानी फेंकेगा आपने तो उसमें टाइट कर दिया सो देर इज ए सिस्टम देर इज ए सिस्टम दैट इज एंड देन यू विल फाइंड दैट नाउ वे टू कम इट्स नॉट दैट ओनली टीचिंग विल दिस काइंड ऑफ टीचिंग बट ऑल्सो दैट यू फाइंड इट इल्यूजरी 
Okay? This is very important. And then, in this one, then it is, that's why he said later on, when the Buddha realized through his own through his methodology, then Siddhartha became the Buddha. Buddha is not the name actually. It's enlightened. It's so kaka ne ke, ye to PhD. Sir, ye PhD hai. Ye kya hua? Upadhi hua. Naam bata de ke jagah pohus ne upadhi ho pohus. Par ek professor hai ye. Naam se to matlab hai nahi hai. To ye upadhi hai. Is kaane hai enlightened. Now what he wants that that every Buddha or every human being has a potentiality, even the creatures, etc. You can, I mean, and in that one, that that Buddhahood has to be explored. So when transformation is there, then transformation, it is elaborate. It's a shield. But how did you start? It's a pancha shield, for example, Brahma Vihara. For example, all of you are there, I'm with you. You maitri ho gaya. आपको चोट लगी तो करुणा हो गई इस सड़क पर जाते हैं उसको जो उठा करके मलम पड़ी करें दो तीन बार हमने भी किया है कोई हॉस्पिटल में मर रहा है घसीट रहा है पैकार रहा है पेशाब किया है उसको उठाकर हॉस्पिटल में लाया उसको नर दिया दस दिन जिया आठ दिन जिया ले जाकर उसको दासनकार कर दिया ऐसा भी हुआ तो लोग जाते हैं उसको बचा देते हैं कहां से आती है ऐसे सीन से सो ऑल दीस थिंग्स आर देयर दैट ब्रह्म विहार ब्रह्म विहार का अगर करते हैं तो उसको ग्रोथ होता है एक एक सेंस में या लिटरल सेंस में करते हैं तो वेनिवोलेंस आ गया मैत्री करुणा कंपेशन इज है मुदिता सम काइंड ऑफ जब उसको फायदा हो गया तो सिंपेथेटिक जो है एंड द लास्ट वन इज उपेक्षा और उपेक्षा मींस दैट आई एम नॉट केयरिंग फॉर माई सेल्फ एक्चुअली आई एम ओपन फॉर द वर्ल्ड आई एम आई एम नॉट ए सेंट आई एम टेकिंग दई टेकिंग द पेन फॉर द Happiness of the other. This is this one. So this way, I have lots of things, but this one is there. How, how what to do, how to do, and when to do. This is ये चीज है ये मेरा kitchen model है बहुत सी चीजें हैं बहुत सी चीजें हैं ये W model है last last point. तीन चार मिनट और होगा तो मिनट. So उसे क्या कर रहे थे वो गए 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 W model. W model see that in that 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 the Brahman is sleeping actually. In consent. In consent sleeping. And then there comes a time, is it mysterious? Then he gets up. And then lots of things develop. So there is a idea that God is energized within himself. Or the unka to neutral hai ki wo lady hai ki gents hai to unko khud bhi nahi pata hai. लेकिन एक जेंडर में रख लीजिए तो उसमें ये किया उसमें वहां उसका ये किया सो सम काइंड ऑफ इंटरनली सम काइंड ऑफ सम काइंड ऑफ रिवोल्यूशन इज टेकिंग प्लेस दैट इज कमिंग डाउन थ्रू आउट एंड देन यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम हियर यू गो अप फॉर द डेवलपमेंट राइट फ्रॉम द मेटेरियल और फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट टू द सुपर माइंड एंड देन सत सद सचिदानंद बट यू हैव गॉट एन यू ये नहीं कि घर में सब पति पत्नी है और जो सर्दी मिले उधर से उधर ही गायब हो गए सबको छोड़ करके ऐसा नहीं होता ना तो छोड़ा नहीं तो वो जो पर फिर जो है अगेन कम डाउन एनर्जी इज कमिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ एंड देन यू गो अप टू सुपर माइंड एंड देन यू कम बैक टू द वर्ल्ड and you have all these ethics and morality etc compassion etc and then towards the end when you are ending your life then you are getting or some other moksha etc i have this thank you i'm very disciplined <laughs> thank you sir for your illuminating lecture you have tried to uh, explain the very core uh, uh, topics of philosophy indian philosophy uh, uh, as well as uh, buddhist philosophy with uh, uh, lots of wit and humor 
giving examples from the kitchen to uh, and your pre uh, your pre marital uh, stages <laughs> so we all enjoyed your lecture very much i think students and ultimately what you try to show is that through your lecture is that mm, like i uh, no, the entire pr procedure the, uh, mm, of buddhism it tries to give provide us an integrated uh, mm, system of life yeah, integrated life system like i uh, which has uh, within its uh, scope not only ethics or morality but ultimately it leads to one spirituality which is moksha and this we can develop or this we uh, we uh, this we can develop when we can have our uh, uh, when we can understand our relationship with others and this relationship is not to be studied as a separate entity but it is within us and it is through our own experiences that we can understand that uh, that what is called pain is also another version of what is called the uh, happiness so pain and happiness these two are not separate they are related so uh, and when i can realize this then i will try also to realize it in others and herein comes the essence of buddhist morality thank you sir for your very nice and illuminating lecture and i must thank you on behalf of this uh, on behalf of the organizers that uh, I, uh, when i approached you for, with uh, within 10 to 15 days you agreed to come in spite of your busy schedule to this college and enrich all of us so this shows the greatness kai uh, of your heart so thank you very much sir thanks credit goes to you because you were <laughs> supporting me sir silently <laughs> So, now you are the, yeah you come to thank you here. madam <laughs> she will be there you no, come I, here i stand i stand with you is ko aja dene to rakhenge khud hi hum mana le liye hain thank you sir <laughs> thank you sir for your wonderful humorous speech we really enjoyed the session but i would like to inform the participants that uh, those who are willing uh, for a question and answer session um i would like to inform them that the question answer session will be there after the third academic session and it will be for 10 minutes thank you uh, after the third academic session okay so. now we shall disperse once again
for a tea break, a brief one for only five minutes. Because we are running behind time and we need to finish uh, our lectures by 4.30. So I thank you again and let us start. So <laughs> So well, as you are all willing uh, to go on with our journey for acquiring knowledge of Buddhist ethics, we now request Dr. Kuntala Bhattacharya, who is currently working as Associate Professor of Robindra Bharati University. He is, she is the Professor of Philosophy in Robindra Bharati University. Madam, I would request you to please come on the dais. I request Dr. Prasad to chair the session. And now I, I would like to share a few words about Dr. Bhattacharya with you. Dr. Kuntala Bhattacharya has authored and co-authored several national and international publications. And she is also working as a reviewer for refuted professional journals. She is having an active association with different societies and academics around the globe. Her contributions to the scientific community is appreciable. Dr. Kuntala Bhattacharya's major research interests involves around Indian philosophy, primarily Nyaya and Buddhist philosophy. Now, a few words about this third academic session. What makes Buddhist philosophy so special is how it studies the truths of life within nature. It is very amazing that 2,600 years ago, the Buddha was interested to study the science of mind and discover the truths of life within nature. Through a good understanding of how the mind, mind functions, a clear understanding of life is obtained. And with this, the way to improve the quality of life is found instead of seeking support from any, any spiritual or supernatural power. Dr. Kuntala Bhattacharya is here to enlighten us about the cognitive elements in Buddhist ethics. Over to you, madam. But before that, we would like to, we, uh, I request uh, Professor Dolly Shaw our colleague and assistant professor in the Department of Philosophy, Ashutosh College, to felicitate Dr. Kuntala Bhattacharya. Thank you, madam, for being with us. And over to you now.
Uh, it's the fag end of the day, but no worries, I'll not engage you for long because my paper is short. But before we begin, I must say that today uh, is full of surprises, pleasant surprises indeed for me, because right from downstairs, I met where I met Shorbani. And when I came upstairs, I saw so, so many familiar faces who are also so close to my heart. So uh, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this seminar. And respected chairperson, Professor Prashad, and our beloved Madhumita Di, as Chandima has rightly said, that is Professor Madhumita Chattopadhyay, uh, and of course the organizers, organizers, and last but not the least, the students of this department. Uh, I would just try to point out very briefly some of the cognitive elements which act as theoretical framework of. Buddhist ethics. Now, Buddhist, Buddhism is essentially an ethical doctrine that we all know. And thus, that perhaps explains why the Buddha dismisses the whole gamut of metaphysical speculation as a futile endeavor. He was always silent to certain questions of a distinct metaphysical character. Those committed to it, that means those committed to metaphysics, he compares to a person struck by an arrow, uh, thickly smeared with poison, who refuses the phys phys physician's help, excuse me, physician's help until he knows the details about his assailant and his weaponry. Now, this is from Chula Malunkya Sutra. I'll be quoting from the Majjhima Nikaya and also from Bodhicharya Vatara. I'll just mention the sources here. Now, being struck by the arrow of craving, afflicted by aging and death, humanity is in urgent need of help. The remedy the Buddha brings as a surgeon for the world is the Dhamma, which discloses both the truth of our existential suffering and the means by which we can heal our wounds. The Dhamma, as we all know, that the Buddha discovered and taught, consists at its core the four noble truths. The truth of suffering, Dukkha. The truth of the origin of suffering, Dukkha Samudaya. The truth of the cessation of suffering, Dukkha and the truth of the way leading to the cessation of suffering. Dukkha Nirodha Gamini Patipada. Now these four truths structured the entire teaching of the Buddha containing its various respects just as the Buddha says in Mahahattipudana Sutta of Majjhimanikaya just as the footprint of any living being, being that walks in, the, in our planet, in Earth, can be placed within an elephant's footprint. Now, now the Dhamma, as we have tried to point out earlier, discloses not only the ethical directives, but also the theoretical backing of Buddhist morality. For though the Buddha denounces a dry, bleak, non-pragmatic metaphysical uh, metaphysician, the intimate relation between ethics and understanding is such that, uh, this is a quote from Vigha Nikaya, Sonadanda Sutra, wisdom is purified by morality and morality is purified by wisdom. Where one is, the other is. The moral man has wisdom, and the wise man has morality, and the combination of morality and wisdom is called the highest thing in the world. It's, as he says, it's like washing one hand with the other or one feet with the other. These are so closely linked to each other. And when asked, what is this morality and what is this wisdom, he answers, 
in the same sutta that when a disciple goes forth and dwells restrained by the restraint of the rules, I'm just quoting from Machima Nikaya, persisting in right behavior, etc., that Brahmin, he's addressing Sonadanda, so that Brahmin, Sonadanda, is morality. And he attains the four jhanas, various insights, and knowledge of the cessation of the corruptions. Thus, he develops wisdom. That Brahmin is wisdom. Now, attaining the four jhanas or the knowledge of the corruption constitutes, constitutes wisdom for a homeless wanderer monk uh, who is in search of enlightenment. Suffering, however, as we all know, is a universal phenomenon and it indiscriminately touches lives of every human beings. So, uh, here we see that uh, this is just to note that the first noble truth, as the first noble truth, the first noble truth as there is suffering or there is dukkha. Now, this term dukkha has a much wider connotation, reflective of a comprehensive philosophical vision, while it draws its affective coloring from the connection, from its connection with pain and suffering, and certainly includes this. I mean, Though it points to suffering in itself, it also has as its denotation to the, the inherent satisfact unsatisfactoriness of everything conditioned, anitta. This unsatisfactoriness of the conditioned is due to its impermanence or anittata, its inability to provide complete and lasting satisfaction. In short, therefore, as the Buddha says, the five aggregates affected by clinging are suffering, and the world, the birth, is itself suffering. Now the question is, what kind of understanding all human beings reading in pain should have in order to pursue happiness or in order to seize or get rid of this suffering? Now, since Buddha, uh, I mean the Buddhists, as Sir has already said, that do not believe in any transcendental power, the moral rules are not divine commandments. So the question will be, can Buddhism provide any adequate theoretical foundation for morality which would be acceptable to all? The answer may be considered in three layers. Each layer answers the reason behind moral motivation of people in a way specific to the grasping ability of the person it is addressed to. Buddha was very conscious of the adhikarins, so there is adhikari bhedhya, he talks of the adhikari bhedhya. Thus, an ordinary but moral man who is not engaged in the search of enlightenment should obey the moral rules because Buddhism believes in karma and rebirth. The second noble truth, uh, we are aware, it basically asserts that dukkha is caused by craving, tanha or trishna, or demanding de desires which keep one within the round of rebirths with its attending aging, sickness and death. This noble truth, in fact, points to the doctrine of dependent origination. Now, this dependent origination is elaborated in the Nidana Sutta and the Maha Nidana Sutta of Anguttara Nikaya. From this we find, and before that, the understanding of this doctrine, that means Pratitya Samutpada, is so central to the Buddhist moral practice that Buddha's chief disciple, Sariputta, had said that whenever one sees dependent origination, he sees dharma, and whoever sees dharma sees, sees dependent origination. Now, in its abstract form, the doctrine says that being, this comes to be, from the cessation of that, this ceases. The main concrete application of this abstract principle is in the form of a series of conditioned and conditioning links. We know that Dadasha Nidana Chakra. 
It's culminating in the arising of Dukkha. But it may be noted here that this formula, besides explaining the origin of suffering, also explains karma and rebirth. The movement of beings between rebirth is not a haphazard process. Everything is within a system, but is ordered and governed by the law of karma. Karma literally means action, and the law of karma is that beings are reborn according to the nature and quality of their actions. That is, good deeds lead to happiness, evil deeds to suffering. This karma law is effective in present life also. Now, the theoretical backing for morality of ordinary or logic domain or who aim in this life to attain happiness, therefore, is constituted by the doctrines of karma and rebirth. That means one who is a layman or one who is an ordinary man, because he would try to have happiness, he, his, I mean, his uh, aim is to have happiness in this life or after, he should do good deeds. This is the first layer which we have spoken of. Now, now we come to the second layer. The question then would be, why then a monk who does not want to be reborn should follow the moral precepts? As we have said, this question takes us to the second layer. The Buddha speaks of three derogatory factors or klesha that are responsible for one's staying bound in samsara. These factors are greed, Lobha, hatred, dvesha, and delusion, moha. Here, delusion is the ignorance of the three marks or characteristics, three lakhana, which are impermanence, suffering, and no self. In fact, the principle of no self is shown in the Buddhist suttas to follow logically from the two marks of impermanence and suffering. Now, we may quote some of the uh, suttas. I think you would like it. In the Alagadupana Sutta, that is the simile of the snake. Buddha was a master of metaphors, you know. Of Majjhima Nikaya, Buddha says, I'm just trying to show how no self doctrine follows from the doctrine of impermanence and the doctrine of suffering, that everything is suffering. Uh, he says, because you may well acquire that possession that is permanent, everlasting, eternal, not subject to change, and that might endure as lo long as eternity. But do you see any such possession? No, Venerable Sir, the Vikyu's answer. So the Lord says, good. I do not see, I too do not see any possession that is permanent, ev ev everlasting, eternal, not subject to change. And then, because what do you think is material form permanent or impermanent? Now, the bhikkhu's answer, it's impermanent, venerable sir. Is what is permanent, what is impermanent, suffering and subject to change, fit to be regarded thus? This is mine, this I am, this is myself. No, venerable sir. Therefore, because any kind of material form whatsoever, whether past, future, or present, internal or external, gross or subtle, inferior or superior, far or near, all material form, that is rupa, as you know, should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom. Thus, how should we look at the rupa? This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. Any kind of feeling whatsoever, Vedana, any kind of perception, Sandhya, any kind of formations whatsoever, Saskara, any kind of consciousness whatsoever, Vijkana, whether past, future, or present, internal, external, gross, subtle, inferior or superior, far or near, all consciousness should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom, thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Seeing thus, because 
a well-taught noble disciple, you're speaking of the monks, becomes disenchanted with material form, disenchanted with feeling, disenchanted with perception, disenchanted with formations, disenchanted with consciousness. And now, being disenchanted, he becomes dispassionate. Through dispassion, his mind is liberated. The implication is, let me just try to be short, that the Buddhists are reductionists regarding persons for whom the concept of I can be deconstructed into or is reducible to five impermanent collections of the skandhas, as we all know. Skandha means the rashi or the collection, namely matter, rupa, feeling, vedana, perception, sanya, impression, sanskara, and consciousness, vijkyan. These collections sufficiently or exhaustively, this is the exhaustiveness claim, as we all know, so there is nothing outside these five components or five collections. This is the exhaustiveness claim. Uh, so this collection sufficiently or exhaustively explain the concept of I. And since I is nothing over and above these collections, this is the reason why the Buddhists are so, uh, I mean, they are so engaged in refuting, uh, accepting, refuting a whole which is over and above the paths. Uh, now there is, I is nothing over and above these collections, uh, which the Indian philosophical, traditional Indian orthodox philosophical schools speak of. So in the sense, this I in the sense of an unchanging, enduring substance is a conceptual fiction. It's really a convenient designator. The term I, it's an empty term. It's a convenient designator. And since it is only centering I, that suffering can have any meaning, if there is no I in the traditional sense of the term, a proper understanding of no self leads to the cessation of suffering. Therefore, coming back to a point, a person striving for Nirvana should be moral because in order to counteract the three poisons, we must develop antidotes to those. And these antidotes come only when we have a proper understanding of no self and immoral conduct from motives that interfere with the liberating insight of no self, I mean immoral conduct stems from the motives that interfere with the liberating on insight of no self. So this, uh, I mean the series is like this, this that the idea of no self, the theory of no self. In fact, the last three, uh, last three, uh, I mean of the eightfold parts, the last three parts, which uh, which are included under samadhi or meditation, these are not for laymen. Uh, laymen. It's only for the uh, and only for those who strive for liberation. That is for the monks. And here we may also note that the eightfold path it should also be understood in two layers. The eightfold paths are different for the laukika or the ordinary men and for the uh, arya or the uh, monks who strive for liberation. So, uh, samyak drishti for the uh, ordinary or layman is that there is karma and if I do a good karma, it would lead to a good rebirth. But for the monk, this Samya Drishti is constantly thinking that my senses are not I, my feelings are not I, my consciousness is not I, my mental dispositions are not I, and this is the feeling which leads them to liberation. And in order to have such feelings, they should be moral. But what about, now we come to the end of our paper almost, what about the moral conduct of a person who has already attained nirvana? Why should he be moral for, why should he be moral for his or her aim is not to have a good rebirth or attain nirvana? He has already, uh, I mean, he has denounced sansara. He doesn't want to come back to the sansara and he 
has already attained liberation. Now, I'll just quote from chapter 8 of Badhi Charya Vatara of Shanti Deva. We have already heard Shanti Deva from uh, Modhumita the Answer. He is an 8th century philosopher of the Mahayana school. Uh, now, this chapter 8 is entitled Perfection of Meditation. Uh, here Buddha says, when fear and suffering are equally abhorrent to others and myself, then what is so special about me that I protect myself but not others? See how Buddha is trying to convince, uh, trying to, I mean, uh, make his point, actually. If I do not protect them because I am not afflicted by their suffering, why do I protect my body from the suffering of a future body, which is not my pain? As we know that a body is, according to the Buddhists, uh, com uh, I mean, it's the, only the collections which are flowing from one moment to another. There is a causal connection between these, uh, 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 I mean, causal connection between these collections or skandhas, but nevertheless, they are distinct from one another. So he asks that uh, I strive to... Uh, eradicate my own suffering. Why do I do so? Because my next, I mean the next uh, collection is distinct from me. Uh, distinct from me means the collection which is presently me. So the, I do not protect them. That means my future existences because I'm not afflicted by their suffering. Why do then I protect my body from the suffering of a future body, which is not my pain? The assumption that it is the same me even then, which the orthodox traditional philosophers would say, Buddha quotes them, that it is the same me even then is false because it is one person who has died and quite another who is born. If one thinks that the suffering that belongs to someone is to be warded off by that person himself, then why does the hand protect the foot when the pain of the foot does not belong to the hand. Okay. So if you think that only another's suffering is to be, I mean, I am not in a position or, or not, I'm not supposed to alleviate another purpose in suffering. Then your hand and your feet, they're also distinct from one another. So why do you try to protect your foot when the pain of the foot does not belong to the hand? I try, I try to protect my foot with my hand. Why do I do so? If one argues that, even though it is inappropriate, it happens because of grasping onto a self, a response is, with all one's might, one should avoid that, which is inappropriate, whether it belongs to oneself or to another. Now, the continuum of consciousness, like a series, and the aggregation of constituents, that means the skandhas, like an army and such, are unreal as we know, because uh, this continuum of consciousness and the aggregation, Buddhas do not believe in aggregate, they do not believe in a whole. And this continuity is not something, I mean, they believe that every distinct moment is separate or distinct from the other moment which comes after it. Like an army and such are unreal. We are often accustomed with the familiar with the uh, example of a uh, forest or an army. It seems that the forest or the army is one, but actually there are so many people, so many soldiers and so many trees which form a forest or an army. Uh, since one who experiences suffering does not exist, to whom does will that suffering belong? So if there is no I and suffering centers around me or around I, so if there is no, no I, then suffering loses its significance. Now, all sufferings are without an owner. So since there is no I, there is no owner of suffering because they are not different. What should be worded of simply because they are suffering? That should be worded of simply. So suffering is not your suffering or my suffering. Suffering is in itself something which should be worded of irrespective of the fact whether it belongs to yourself, it doesn't belong to anybody, in fact, because there is no I to which it should belong to. So 
so why should we not strive to alleviate others' suffering? Why should suffering be prevented? That's what the finally says that because everyone agrees, if it must be warded off, then all of it must be warded off. And if not, then this goes for oneself and it, as it does not everyone else, as it does not for everyone else. Now, the point being made in the verses is that the collections constituting the future person with the painful body are not the skandhas that are, that are of present yet. We think it perfectly reasonable to each of us to take a special interest in our own welfare. In fact, each of us think that it is irrational not to take care of oneself and to take care of others. But Buddha alleviates, Buddha negates this position. I'm just trying to uh, read out uh, just a minute. I'm not as systematic as Modhumita is. I was just saying that. So here and there written scribbles. Now. The argument is like this. We are each obligated to prevent one's own suffering. In case of one's own suffering, future suffering, it is the one set of skandhas that does the prevention for another set that has suffering. In the case of one's own present suffering, it is one part that does the preventing of another part that has the suffering. The sense of I that leads one to call future skandhas and distinct present persons as me is a conceptual fiction. Hence, it cannot ultimately be true that some suffering is one's own and some that of others. Hence, the claim that we are obligated to prevent only our own suffering lacks ultimate grounding. Hence, either there is an obligation to prevent suffering regardless of where it comes, where it occurs, or else there is no obligation to prevent suffering. But everyone agrees that at least some suffering should be prevented, namely one's own. Therefore, there is an obligation to prevent suffering regardless of where it occurs. Now, just I'm ending this uh, short uh, sharing with you my thoughts, seeing that I'm yet to know what the status of an arhat would be in regarding to alleviate another suffering. Because as we all know, for the Hinayanas, transferring one's merit is not possible. For an arhat, it is impossible to transfer his merit to another, to alleviate another person's suffering. This is only a feature of the Mahayana Buddhists, the Bodhisattvas. They are able to transfer their own merit and they are able, because the, the, the feeling which separates Hinayana and Mahayana, that means Shravakayana and Bodhisattvayana is, as Sir have said, this is compassion. The Mahayana systems are, uh, I mean, they have their doctrine from the Prajna Paramita Sutra, which speaks of emptiness. And this emptiness uh, combined with karuna or compassion is the main feature of Mahayana ethics. So this is only, I mean, this uh, argument, though it is taken from Buddha itself, I am yet to ask, uh, I am yet to know how it applies to the Hinayana uh, uh, arhats. But for the uh, bodhisattvas, we can uh, see, absolutely see that this, um, this, is com this compassion towards other beings, which enables them to help others and to stay moral. Thank you.
Hello, thank you, madam, for your wonderful deliberation. Now, uh, since we are uh, running behind time, uh, uh, we would like to uh, begin our interactive session. All our three speakers for this national seminar are here to answer your queries. The interactive session will be for 10 minutes and not more than 15 minutes. So please, those who want to ask questions, please come over here and briefly, uh, okay. Simple. Okay. Simple and uh, I request you again to make only simple, uh, make simple and uh, very straight questions, and the interactive interactive session will be for fifteen hours, okay. fifteen minutes. I'm sorry, fifteen minutes. <laughs> but not exceeding 15 minutes. Thank you. How can Odisha's Rupano relate it to enlightenment when self is? Unreal or impermanent. Hey, uh, 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 How can it with enlightenment? This is my hey, question. Hey, 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 so the, aap jo, uh, you, 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 you are in the hotel and you have uh, uh, you have eaten I mean the delicious food there many times and you, you are inviting other your friends also okay you uh, for 20 years for 10 years you have been enjoying the delicious food okay suppose one day it strikes you isa khana achha kaise banta hai this is my feelings 
नहीं पहले पहले उसी को लेट में लेट में सिर्फ ये यू बैठ करके जो है बड़ा मुश्किल हो जाता है हम नहीं बोल सकते आ जाइए कोई ये सारी चीजें जो है नाउ यू हैव यूर टेस्ट एंड यू हैव योर फ्रेंड्स एटसेट्रा और फैमिली मेंबर्स बट सडनली इट केम टू योर माइंड दैट हाउ कम दैट दिस डिलीश फूड विच आई कैन नॉट कुक बट ही एवरी टाइम द फूड इज डिलीशियस how what will you do you will ask the bara no no answer so you will go to the you have the only one uh, only one solution is that you go to the kitchen and watch it now if you are wa- if you are watching then you find that there are lots of cockroaches the uh, f- uh, the f- uh, uh, vegetable is not cleaned the water is not clean the lord jo hai is 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 not with the hand with the legs they are uh, preparing all sorts of paste etc suppose this is unhygienic conditions cockroach etc etc how will you react you saw this one it is being cooked behind the curtain and one is that i am tasting okay and if you are seeing means that this delicious food is the product of that unhygienic cooking what will you what will be your reaction never you will never go to that or you ask him okay you do that mujhe to do cockroach aur dal dijiye ki taste aur thoda badh jaye kahenge that is the cause and here is the taste the result but because you did not know this one that is this kind of this food is cooked in the kitchen okay so your mind will be clear now what buddha did everything is stable not moving but if you go deeper and deeper and deeper is suppose you have a very powerful very powerful kya kehte hain usko दूर से जो नहीं नहीं यू 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 हैव 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 मशीन मशीन एंड एंड कैन सी 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 दैट दैट इज़ वेरी डीपली ओके जस्ट इन इन द द द इन डायग्नोसिस सिस्टम आर सीइंग ऑल दीज थिंग्स और इफ यू कम टू नो दैट यू आर नॉट एक्स एज एन इंडिविजुअल राधर वन बिलियन सेल्स आर देर इन साइड यू See, okay, so this kind of thing, which is hiding inside you, and if you come to know, your idea will change. For example, because everything is flowing, everything is changing, everything is all this or so. But when you come back, this kind of intuition, for example, pragya, etc., etc., and pragya based on all sorts of practices, etc. Okay, so when you come, you know. and that one becomes the actually the foundation of the entire world these all these are the phenomena which are not real okay so this is but it's a very big one uh, professor talked about the pratite samutpad and then about the that that since he, then he discovered so many other things formula for example he is called uh, <coughs> vaishaj guru that he is a doctor and what the doctor does the first thing is that there is a problem suppose a pain is there or to, or any other suppose the cancer is there or suppose a heart attack is there all sorts of things are there suppose so there is this is the problem the suffering is there now suffering is there then there is a source of that there is a cause of that if there is a cause of that then there is a solution is there if there is a solution then what is the solution अष्टांग मार्ग इज इट ओके समथिंग लाइक दिस डिफरेंट मोड्स आर देयर एंड दैट्स बट यू हैव यू मस्ट हैव अ वेरी डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ नोइंग ए फैकल्टी फॉर ए डिफरेंट फॉर ए हियर यू आर टेकिंग यूजिंग ऑल दिस फैकल्टी सिक्स फैकल्टीज फाइव एक्सटर्नल वन इज इंटरनल ओके एंड दिस माइंड इटसेल्फ इफ इट इज इफ माइंड इज मकामले 
What? What? माइंड इज परमानेंट इन बुद्धिज्म नॉट परमानेंट मीन्स जैसे परमानेंट का मतलब समझिए रिवर का नाम क्या है वट इज दमुना रिवर इज फ्लोइंग एंड रिवर इज मेड ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल एटलीस्ट वॉटर मॉलिक्यूल्स आपने कभी पानी बॉयल किया है किया है किया है ना सो इस सी द चेंज इज इस सो हैव यू सीन द फैन हाउ मेनी ब्लेड्स आर देयर इन योर फ्लैन इन योर फैन कितने पंखे कितने हैं उसमें हाउ मेनी ब्लेड्स आर देयर पंखियां कितनी है फ्लैन थ्री वॉट थ्री और फोर मैक्सिमम इसको फुल चला दीजिए अब गिरिए कितना है ये है सो द ट्रूथ अल्टीमेट ट्रूथ बट इट रिक्वायर्स डिफरेंट नॉलेज सिस्टम एंड हियर इट्स वेरी मच इधर बिकॉज यू डोंट टेक केयर ऑफ दैट अब आपने अपना हार्ट देखा है लंग्स देखा है किडनी देखा है और सिस्टम देखा है नहीं दिखा तो देखा किया एक आदमी टॉयलेट जाता है किस लिए जाता है आप बताइए शौच करने के लिए मूत्रदान करने के लिए करता है ना कि वही जो है गणेश जी को लेते जाते हैं उसी में तीस सीट में बैठ के पूजा करते हैं ऐसा तो नहीं करते हैं ना यू गो टू दूल यू गो टू दंदिर और मस्जिद एक्सेट्रा दिस द होल थिंग आई एम कैरी ऑन दिस डी थिंग सो कॉल्ड तो आपने क्या किया नहा करके ऊपर से नहा है ना ये बुद्ध ने यह कहा कि एट थ्री ओ क्लॉक इन द मॉर्निंग देर इन इन दिन इन दैट एरिया देर वॉज ए लेडी At three o'clock and shivering in the winter, going to take the bath. Buddha confront. I mean, uh, 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 ask him, "Why are you? Where are you going? I am going to take bath. For what? For liberation, moksha. Look like, how many, for how many years you have been going. Look how many thirty years. And then, moksha means means that you you are gone. And then he and then he says that. If water has, if this river has the power to liberate you, then not only you but also the, all those creatures would have liberate, been liberated. That's why this is the wrong thing. This is the dogmatic idea. Idea. ये बड़ा आसान है. वैसे इसे very easy to believe. Is it? I mean, you see, in the Kumbh ka mela. Thousand millions, millions of the millions of people died because of only that. Or I'm, I'm going last point. Karein. My mother is an example who had not studied anything really, but every time she, you see, you, uh, she used to ask me. ये तो ना पढ़ा ला लेकिन बुद्धि ना मुझे. Because she was, she after marriage she took me to many, many, many temples. I said that okay. But at one point on the bank of the river, it was a dirty place, Sati Mata, and she was there. I denied, and then she she started crying. Hey Mata, inko maaf kar diye. I itna padhalal, lekin budhi na boi. Na bhal budhi. It seems, see, this is not a simple thing. 
it's a study so yeah dekhiye if it took 6 years time and 45 45 years for i 45 years to go around uh i have a very main question uh to kunala ji um actually i just want to understand i don't understand the business so very much um we all know that uh the elastic version especially two kinds of formo or rigid sahama and ishkama in the uh so that uh it is supposed that uh every action has its fruit and we have to uh, bear those fruits so either in the positive way or in the negative way pa pa kuna so if you do good actions then you go to uh, heaven and uh, the other one is the reverse uh i'm just uh, trying to know whether um, there is any concept like uh nishama karma in buddhism so that uh uh In Buddhism, as it is said, that you uh, be good, uh, be in the moral path. But in spite, in spite of being good, in spite of the you uh, be in the moral path, that is also an action, and that also has some fruit that you should bear in some way or other. So the point of Jamandal Bad or remark is that um, uh, since you have done certain actions. to uh, to suffer the fruits you must take another path that is the logic now uh, in the buddhism also uh, you perform certain good things maybe certain bad things maybe but uh, is that uh, the, does that logic uh, uh, don't appear in buddhism also for rebirth there is a way out in nishkama karma uh, in the case of uh, other indian thinkers but uh, if you don't say that um, bhaja beech uh, from where no uh, plants are grown okay but uh, is there any similar concept in buddhism uh, similar to that uh, nishkama karma that is my question and another is that nirban is that a jab, m- merely a negative concept nibhe jao nirbhakrita hava so it is all blown out uh, is there any a uh, positive aspect to the path that is uh, another thing that i would like to know okay so very difficult questions indeed so uh, i'll try to answer and and uh, very relaxed because i have beside me some stalwarts who are will also the questions on my behalf if i am i can't uh, the first question is that uh, yes the buddhists uh, maybe i was not um, lucid enough to um, convey my uh, thought that the buddhists indeed believe in karma and for the layman uh, karmic deed always eats fruits and i should do that is the maxim i should do something good in order to have or yield some that because that deed will yield some good results hmm. no it's i think so because it would yield some good results um, that's for the layman and that is the reason why i am born again because till i am not liberated i have to just like the traditional uh, i mean the uh, orthodox systems i think that i have to be born again and again to uh, for bhoga or for enjoyment to of fruits. to reap the fruits yeah and i haven't quite uh, thought of this that nishkama karma i haven't found this term in buddhism anywhere perhaps motumita dev will be able to say i haven't found this term anywhere but the actions of a monk uh because even uh, yeah, that the uh, buddhists do not uh, uh, speak of the uh, nishkama karma may be understood from uh, uh, this fact that in the uh, uh, theravada tradition or the shravaka jana tradition the uh, um, 
the intention is uh, always liberation uh, uh, nirvana of oneself but in the case of the mohajan or bodhisattva jano tradition the aim is uh, that uh, is the liberation of all so in both the cases there is an objective there is a desire that desire is liberation whether it be for myself or for others yeah. so it's uh, uh, not it cannot be totally nishkamo as it has been in the orthodox tradition now if it is not nishkamo hmm. uh, then you have to read the fruits again no 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 i just want to know what is the logic behind it no the logic is uh, that here i am trying to uh, uh, remove the sufferings of others so it's uh, one gets into bondage when one has according to the buddhist system there are three types of defects uh, that is a uh, uh, greed hatred and delusion now here you don't have that so that's why it does not create my bondage i want to be born but that is not for my own sake i want to be born only to help others to get liberated so it's an altruistic and motive. altruistic motive it is not my selfish motive okay that's why it does not uh, I, uh, it does not um, bind me to the world of uh, um, this pleasure and pain and other things the yes. mundane life mm. it's really mm. really please nirvana what about for the hinaya and is the all part he is not living the limits of the samsara he is transcending samsara and he is beyond good and evil he leads a completely amoral life so his deeds we are not to be counted as these which would yield some fruits or something like that okay? no even the even I one the bodhisattvas are they are living for another huh. to... no even in the case of the hino uh, janas uh, or the sravaka janas yes. when they are living after attainment of nirvana mm-hmm. uh, uh, not the arhats the uh, 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 as buddhas they may be called pratyeka buddhas or uh, uh, others there they are not uh, living they are living a totally secluded life they are living a totally secluded life and you can have the, and the question of morality arises only when you live in a society so if you lead a totally solitary life then you cannot do anything good or bad to others no question asked let me give you the example so you in can this is the best session i am telling you closing just have some time because we are closing and you will get uh, so many new things but sir i have yes, i will have to leave by 5 yes. <laughs> i have Aj- some other adhi na adhi na 5 minutes me for the bad side sorry you are sitting in a drawing room and somebody somebody is pushing your door and enters inside and close the door how will you feel you will ask what are you what is wrong no somebody is chasing me to kill me and that's why please allow me to hide somewhere okay you will think you okay you hide yourself and then those four or five whether policeman or whether any criminal Any, and then knock the door. Okay, somebody did you? Did you see somebody like this, Rani? What will you do? Will you speak truth? Truth, or you will go for the hinsa or untruth? How? What will you do? Because both are in the Gita. Sadaran, samanne jo. 
if you say that, no, I don't want to tell a lie. I said that, no, 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 here he is hiding and he will be killed there. Then this means that you, <laughs> your truth became the reason you can say that for getting him killed. What will you do then? It depends on the situation. So far as his calm is concerned, it is for that one where the, for the dharma, adha, adha, adharma, I mean, adharma, you, adharma has to be controlled. Because dharma has to be protected. And the adharma has to be eliminated. And that is possible only when there is an ethics of war. That is called ethics of war. A morality hai. This is your morality. This is your ethics to protect all the policemen, etc., etc. They are not for salary uh, only, not for the family only, but the life is there. Yeah. So, Nishkam means that I am not for myself. I am not saving my life at the, uh, on the, um, on the uh, border. I am sacrificing. And the training, in the training, they are told, they are trained that you have come here to get yourself killed. First, first training. So, there are, there is a situation. This is situation. Yes, they're different. There is a situation ethics also. <laughs> situation ethics also. It's very... Tell me about the positive aspect of time. But a, a few things I complete. One, two. That Sobhal uh, Mahayan is concerned. Mahayan became very evolutionary, very radical against the early Buddhism. In many ways, for example, this is Samutpad, etc., etc., or so, such thing. We are not going into detail. And she has already talked about that area, and she also mixed it. Now, in that case, you'll find that uh, Bodhisattva has the voj, okay? That he has, unless everybody is not. Everybody is not liberated, you can say that. And that's why, despite the fact that a bodhisattva, bodhisattva like a, the Buddha, he was entitled like that, not only the single one. So the bodhisattva will say that, no, I don't want, even if I have, if, even if I have uh, uh, cleared all the uh, examination, I have, so I shall help others to pass the examination, something like this one, at my, at my risk, yes, yes, or loss, or example. So that bodhisattva, suppose someone is going and when going somewhere in the Nirmana stage, man, usme there they say that no, it's my choice that I have to go to the uh, sansar. I have to go back at one place. Because everywhere there is a doubt, uh, skepticism or the, you can say questions. Some question, these questions have to be answered. So answers are there. This is just a concept. You don't know. Anyway, please go ahead. <laughs> what I know is that yeah, I don't need the mic at all. Is that uh, according to the Buddha, Nirvana is ineffable. Uh, I mean, can it be designated as either positive or negative? Not at all. Because it's something. When you are de describing something as positive, you need to. Uh, 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 have words. You need to use words. That is, it is this or this. Is, it is that. But it is uh, uh, in such a state uh, where you are, you are having direct realization, but you cannot describe it. That is, every word has its own limitations. So these limitations cannot be applied to that stage. That's why a nirvana cannot be described in either positive terms or even in negative terms. Yes, yes. she is very right. Because only by removing them, demolish them, declaring them uh, meaningless, 
and again you were taking the shelter of our two yes. side so why why it's uh, silence silence it is silence to say but uh, uh, there is a language those who have attained nirvana <laughs> they have they have a language of their own and this language and uh, that's language of silence and uh, through that language they can communicate with persons mm. of the same wavelength and not with uh, uh, you or me and that's why there is a clash between vedanta and buddhism uh-huh. vedanta says that anirvachaniya yeah. iske expert are kar to diya buddhism does not use anirvachaniya we cannot say even on even even, 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 even if you use the word anirvachaniya <laughs> then we are using it wrong <laughs> इसको कहते हैं प्रपंच शून्यता प्रपंच शून्य जस्ट फील शांति पीस it would have been better for us if the students could ask any question okay tumra de jodi banglateo proshno thake tumra jiggesh korte paro jodi kono chatrer kono banglateo proshno thake tahole jiggesh korte paro proshno korecho to ami kichu ba ajke ja shunle tar theke jodi kaju kichu more hoy jiggesh korte हेलो हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन मुस्लिम फैमिलीस्ट ऑप्शन मुस्लिम फैमिलीस्ट गुड इवनिंग Uh, so my question is uh, the doctor what did he say uh, in the layer 2 of the eight fold parts of the ashtanga kundu that my consciousness my emotions my senses these are nothing that belongs to me or actually uh, are nothing i so my question is uh, in the light of buddhism who am i <laughs> चारियटिया upper portion or the wheels <coughs> none of them is the chariot so but it's convenient for us to uh, uh, call this chariot i uh, call this thing a pattern uh, a chariot so the same is with the self we don't have any self all our experience what what does experience gives us give us i mean experience gives us some matters proper my consciousness my feelings nothing beyond that nothing beyond that and since each of them are impulse like that it is only regarding i that i have suffering and if this conception of i it's a false conception if it is removed then there will be no suffering just the opposite of vedanta no no actually we can uh, we can say that we have the notion of i so long as we are in this samsara level yes. once when i have that feeling that what is meant by i what i call i is just like a chariot that is there is nothing uh, which can be called but jake amra shoja banglay roth bolte pari 
মানে চাকা এক্সেল এই সমস্ত গুলো বাদ দিয়ে আলাদা করে যাকে আমরা রড বলতে পারি আলাদা করে রড করে কিছু নেই হ্যাঁ সেইটা যখন আমরা বুঝতে পারবো আগে আ যাও আগে আর আরেকটা হলো যে এরা তো অবয়বের অতিরিক্ত অবয়বি শিকার করেন না কারণ সবটা মিলিয়ে রথ হলো এটাও এরা বলবে এত যত্ন করে অবয়বের অতিরিক্ত ওই জন্য আমরা আর্মি বা ফরেস্ট এর ডিস্ট্রিক্টটা দিলাম আর্মি আমরা তো বলে একটা আর্মি অনেকগুলো লোক যেন একটা একটা এক হয়ে গেছে বা ফরেস্ট একটা বোন আসলে কিন্তু প্রত্যেকটা আলাদা আলাদা গাছ প্রত্যেকটা আলাদা আলাদা সৈন্য নাম দিচ্ছি আমি বলছি আমি অমুক আমি একে বলছি যে এ হচ্ছে এ বা ও হচ্ছে প্রিয়াঙ্কা বা ও হচ্ছে রবি এরকম করে এক একটা ব্যবহারের জন্য নাম দিচ্ছে কিন্তু রবি তো জন্মসূত্রে বা কোনোভাবে রবি এই নামটা তার মধ্যে নেই ঠিক সেই একই রকম ভাবে রিক্সা বলা ভি সারি চিজ হাউ <laughs> 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 How have you become a graduate student? How is it? Kharida? Last exam. How did you get Kharida? No. Yes or no? No. 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 You are. So then how? By acquiring knowledge? By knowledge. Yes. One day you will become the Buddha because the potentiality is there. Just think. Don't you? All these questions are very useful. It's not done with a man. 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 This means that if you have developed your knowledge, knowledge it's like you are growing. Buddha also did like this. Some is not only the class. So that's it. Then he became the Buddha. So it, he will be better graduate. Graduate. Better. Better. This is Upad. He can be a Buddha. Yes, Buddha. This is the process. Potentiality is there. here we in our uh, interactive session we are uh, behind time and uh, now we now we request uh, dr reena kaur dotto to uh, begin the valedictory session for all of us should we go there open it jai ji can we ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ ফিলসফি আশুতোষ কলেজ আই উড লাইক টু থ্যাং অল দ্য মেম্বার্স হু আর অ্যাটেন্ডিং দ্য সেমিনার বোথ offline and online it is a national seminar in collaboration with our iqsc team and calcutta university and 
in association with our Mohan Colleges and Sport Colleges. Today we have with us Dr. Professor Pralankar Bhattacharya. We would like to thank him for taking initiative in all academic program to make our dream come true. We would like to thank Dr. Amit Bhattacharya for setting the tune of the theme which held the path to work on. It is our immense pleasure that we have with us an intellectual resource person like Professor Dr. Bodhi Shankar Prashad. Sir, thank you very much for your lively session. We have been enriched by your thoughtful and erudite discussion and also for sharing the session of Dr. Pundala Bhattacharya. We, sir, we are looking forward for the next session which will be held tomorrow. Madhumita Di, you were one of the pioneers of Buddhist philosophy. We thank you for your thoughtful, thought-provoking discussion. Your topic is very interesting. You explained in detail about the man-nature relationship as, as per Buddhist ethics. Our last speaker was Dr. Kuntala Bhattacharya. She is like my elder sister and I knew her from my college days. She discussed the cognitive elements of Buddhist ethics. She gave us a comprehensive explanation and development of human cognition from the perspective of Buddhist ethics. Other than academic sessions, there are many others without whose support the seminar would not be possible. First and foremost, I would like to thank our principal sir, Dr. Manush Kobi, who has constantly inspired us and financially gave full support to organize the seminar. IQC team, always with us, with their valuable suggestions, also deserve our hurtful thanks. I would like to thank our technical team, Sri Shomnath Dash, Sri Shoman Chongdar, and Amrita for their technical support. Without them, YouTube streaming, online seminar streaming would not be possible. Our sanctuary building staff, Sri Oshim Babu Proshenzi, are all here and help us. Thank you. Our students who have done all the work behind the scene, thank you all for being with us. I would like to thank all my departmental colleagues for their tireless effort to make it happen. Thank you again. Now I want to give a big applause to our audience. If they are not here, everything will be in vain. So a big, big thank all of you and hope you are always will be with us on our future endeavors. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Thank you. All are requested to uh, um, collect their registration certificate from the registration desk. <laughs> I'm not new. It can it can be very successful. Hello, hello, hello. There is one more announcement here. As we end our national seminar on Buddhist ethics, uh, there will be an extension lecture tomorrow. There will be an extension lecture tomorrow at 11.30 at uh, room number 92 of our main building. Please, I request all the participants here and our dear students to be present there. Thank you. Thank you.